guess I'm gonna go pee. <laughs> Weird timing. Because we just changed over. Is this great timing or is this bad timing? Yeah, listen, this is the best timing it can get if you want to go right now, real quick, and then we'll I get like the started sound of that. as soon as you're back. But <laughs> yeah, we're on. We are live. <laughs> you're we are. Hey, you went. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, give us just a moment here. Potty breaks wait for no man. Or no, Chris. This is, as you say, one of those things that we'll fix in post. Is everybody actually prepped for tonight? Yeah, I took my shoes off. I will be very honest, as we're just like talking amongst friends here in the very beginning of this, I'm a little bit nervous about this combat, you guys. Um, What's the combat? It looks pretty scary. I don't know if it's... <laughs> oh, yeah, no combat. Who knows? Like, maybe there won't be combat. Maybe we'll have a finale without a combat. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel. And I'm Steven! <laughs> and we are the Faint Divinities, a newer channel here on Twitch and YouTube and Discord and Twitter. And we have a TikTok and a YouTube. It's, I don't know which ones I said. We have everything. You can find us everywhere. Um, and we're we, there. Yeah, we're there. And we are playing Dagger Heart on a weekly basis at this point. If you haven't joined us yet, we truly have been live. This is our fourth week in a row, guys. This is a month. Yeah, yeah, good job, everybody. Pretty impressive. Uh, we did a session zero and sessions one and two, and this is the third session. If you are tuning in today, this is, I don't think Gene screamed that that was a Steven Universe reference, at least not coming from me, but somebody else may have done it. But um, if you're tuning in today for the first time, this is our finale. You are welcome to watch along because there is definitely going to be some mechanics that go on tonight. But if you're here for the story, this is maybe not where you want to get started. Um, so just as an FYI, we're going to be wrapping things up uh, tonight, hopefully, if everything goes well. And I really hope that nobody dies. Yay! It's going to be <laughs> least of all, Marlo Fairwind. Um, so... <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna do what we have done in the past here, and we're gonna go around first to introduce our characters, and then I will do a brief recap of everything. So, if we want to, and I think that I got all my images fixed this time, if we want to go ahead and get started, and we're gonna start with, as always, Steven. Hello, um, tonight I'm gonna be playing Tedios with his companion Wilbur, um, Bill and Ted, he is a simian. Um, Ranger, and uh, I am a Ridgeborn. Perfect. And then we have Justin. Oh, that's me. Uh, I'm playing Jimbo, the uh, Ridgeborn uh, dwarf rogue. Uh, yeah, that's me. And then we have Kayla. I am playing Anura. She is the Highborn Rivet Bard. And lastly, we have Chris. I'm playing Tinkerbell, the uh, warrior called of the brave, and then he's a Wanderborn, so for each Wanderborn, you uh, shuffle through the deck of uh, Ancestries, and then you pick one. Let's do it, let's do it. Yeah, that's the first mechanic of the night, is that the Wanderborn community at the start of every session, you get to choose one at random. What did you get? I got Slyborn. <gasps> oh, that's cool. Ooh, sneaky. Helps me sneak around, find a place to hide, and negotiate with criminals. Is that also the one that gives you dark vision? Wait, what? Or is that a different thing? Is that the one that gives you dark vision, or is that a different thing? I don't know. I feel like that'd be weird if that's like a, where you grew up. I, don't, I think Let's that's see. Underborn, maybe? Underborn yeah, yeah, have like, some right. dark you're vision right. stuff going on? Yeah. I, I don't know, but you, yeah, Chris, you might want to have that pulled up because, uh, you know, again, today we are going to be hitting some mechanics and stuff and you might need every advantage that you could get, maybe. Uh, yeah, you get um advantage on any roles to negotiate with criminals, detect lies, or find a safe place to hide. Ooh, that's cool. Okay, love that. All right, cool. So that is our merry band of adventurers or intrepid adventurers or however you want to say it. Uh, but, so we're going to go ahead and give a hopefully pretty brief recap. Um, but you should have seen all of our character art on the screen as we were toggling through items. Uh, and now we're going to be moving over to the kind of 
first adventure hook we had, Marlo Fairwind, who is friends with Anora, our ribbit bard, who, our highborn ribbit bard, rather, and is sorceress to King Emerus. She went with this group of adventurers, uh, kind of a dark horse group, if you will, uh, for delivery of a package to the town of Hush, specifically to the Whitefire Arcanist there, uh, who they didn't have a ton of information about. Uh, and so they, our players, between sessions one and two, adventured into the Sablewood, which is a lush, green, ancient forest where worship of the old gods still happens regularly. They were ambushed. They defeated off the thistle folk thieves and ambushers in that combat and finally did make it safely to Hush. They scouted around, met a lot of charming and wildly inappropriate in some cases NPCs. Uh, <laughs> we got our tooth fairy, some chops there in terms of his trade initiation and finally they were instructed on where to go to find the white fire arcanist at the end of last stream they did come to the tree house which was described as a massive tree amongst a forest a uh, a small wood where all of the different tree trunks were carved with faces that seemed to stare at the party as they passed. Uh, inside of that massive tree there in the center, there was a large home that was suspended from the ropes and it looked like a large persimmon, our group decided. <laughs> and uh, when they finally did get the inhabitant's attention, uh, she lowered her home down to the ground level and appeared there in front of the group. Now, as a reminder, this person, the Whitefire Arcanist is, and I'm pulling this directly from the Sablewood Messenger's Quick Start Adventure, a seven-foot mix of humanoid and firefly, the Arcanist is a fairy that moves in a combination of both very slow and suddenly jerky motions. Uh, through, though her expressions are difficult to read, her emotions are very clear in her voice. She's old but spry, and as the group was invited into her home, remember that she had stopped the crate from further damaging her threshold because it's just too large. If people weren't getting the size of this crate, it is significant. Uh, and she had basically told it to stop, planted a dome around it that was covered in fireflies, and then invited you all into the home. She did, uh, as you entered, you did notice that inside the interior was surprisingly spacious. Uh, the main room, a crowd of potion bottles, spell books, runes, plants, and small creatures of all kinds. But no one could classify this place as messy. It was clear that if anyone moved a single item, even an inch, the old fairy would notice. I'm going to give you guys a little bit more flavor as we're here in this room and before we dive into the dialogue with our Whitefire Arcanist, uh, which is about some of the things that you see in this room. So I've already mentioned that there are all of these animals, and it's interesting to note that... As you guys are kind of getting your bearing on this house, and it is a lovely home inside, it's kind of a cottage core vibe. Those animals, though, are in uh, some of them, a lot of them are free roam, though some of them are tucked behind cages or snakes behind some arcane wards rather than glass. Uh, but those of you who are taking the time to really look around, you're all noticing that at the nape of their necks, you're seeing that eye that you had seen on some of the wildlife here in the Sablewood as you were traveling through on your way to Hush. You'll remember the Where's the eye? That. I'm sorry, what was that? Sorry, I think you might cut out a little for me. Where was the eye? Oh, on the napes of their necks. Yeah, oh, okay. I, 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 the snake included, although I don't think they have necks. It would just be there on the back. And remember that these are functional eyes that kind of follow you as they go around. Um, there are all kinds of creatures with this. Another thing that I do want to note is that stands out amongst this wild den is a wall that is covered in 
delicate, sorry, very decidedly placed bottles, uh, small bottles that have inside of them what appear to be fireflies, or most of them seem to have fireflies where you can see them flashing lights, but some of them are kind of interestingly dim and do not light, and if you peer closely enough, you can, even from the distance, see the small outline of what appears to be a dead firefly in some of these bottles at the bottoms of each one of these very small jars. And each one of those bottles does have a label there on the front of them, though you would have to get closer to take a look at those if you wanted. Uh, but we'll circle back to that if the group chooses to investigate any further, because now we are moving into our actual roleplay portion of the game. So. I did give kind of a teaser at the end of the last episode, but as a reminder, as you all have entered into her home, that seven foot white fire arcanist, who is again a firefly herself, uh, looks around the group and says, well, you are very late. I, I, I had heard from Marlo that this was an incredibly important package. I hope that it's not one of those arcane wards of the city. If it was one of the arcane wards, that would leave the city unguarded, unprotected. Oh no, that would be terrible indeed, wouldn't it? The poor city would fall by daybreak in that case. Oh, imagine all the death and destruction. I wonder how Marlo would die. And she kind of, kind of thinks to herself and kind of erratically moves and then tithers over to her small kitchen. Would anybody like some tea? And she begins rustling her hands together and you see all of these teacups and saucers kind of fly from cupboards uh, and begin pouring tea out that kind of juts into all of your hands, though none of you had consented or agreed to having the tea. But you all find yourself there kind of holding some tea as she and looks at the group. I'll sniff it. Okay. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give it a little sniff too. We're doing spell I check. I lick again. it a little bit. Just. Well, I love that. Okay. Well, you guys can tell me what you want this tea to smell like. I will give you kind of the information that it it smells lovely. It smells nice. It's not. It's you don't anticipate that it's like poisoned or anything. Hmm. Delicious. So, what does it smell like? Guys? Um, I, I, it has very like aromatic fragrances, a little bit of like some honeys, and maybe like definitely some rose in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very, very frilly, very girly. I love it. Anora's drinking it. She's not even the least bit suspicious. She's just, mm. oh my goodness, it's so refreshing. Thank you it so much. Very nice she loves the tea I party. Appreciate it as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, having a nice place. As you say, like, I burnt my tongue so I don't smell <laughs> <laughs> anything. <laughs> As you guys are doing that, she uh, kind of is, again, just bustling around her home. She seems to go from being raptly attentive to you to kind of dreamy about her home on a whim. And at one point, she looks over you again and sees that you're having this tea, and she oh, kind of points at one of her cupboards and all of these little, I'm going to call them cookies, though instinctively I wanted to say biscuit, uh, kind of clink out of the thing and just dunk into your teacups they're just like sitting right in the mess you have to very quickly pull them out if you want to keep them from getting soggy but again she is erratic as a person i just want my soak i love that yeah like as you came into the house there was a sense of urgency about her she was almost chiding you for being late and at this point she's just humming to herself as she's walking around her home every once in a while she kind of and she looks over to her wall of fireflies and you see one of them will dim for a second and then it comes back on and she goes and then continues about her her time so what are you guys doing do you need help, like, opening the crate? Do you, I mean, we brought that here. Do you, oh, 
Yeah, it seemed, it seemed urgent. Oh, that's right. Yeah, oh, yeah. you because because King Everest sent you guys. Yeah, oh, of course, of course. Um, the crate, the crate. You know, I'm not in any real rush. Is it is, is it urgent? Time sensitive. Did you, did you, you say it was? You oh. said the wards. You know, Marlo, oh, the dear. city. Oh, the city wards. Oh, oh, oh. Do you think that it is? Do you think that it is one of those wards? She, she didn't tell me what it was. I, I don't know. I think we should check, though, right, if you right. think it Try could it, yeah. be. A very, yeah, a, 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 an excellent point. <clears throat> and as she kind of claps her hands, listen up, everyone. Fold down. And you all immediately see that the walls of this room begin to splay out away from all of you as you're sitting in. Furniture moves across the floor in a sweeping motion to the edges of the walls. And you hear in loud banging wooden plank sounds as it unfolds flat. And you are all now standing under the tree in what effectively is a paper flattened house. And then you see her look over to the crate and say, hey, hey, you there, you there, come on, come on, out of the ward. And she releases the ward, all the fireflies kind of flitter away. And that crate, again, kind of pops up with its little spindly spider legs and kind of wags its tail and runs inside. At that point, it sits down at her feet and she kind of pulls her foot away. It says, no, 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 not, not like that. And then snaps again and the entire house again begins to reconstruct itself in rapid movement. This time though, it doesn't get it quite right. And as it reforms, you all feel yourself being pressed very close together and are all suddenly there pressed into each other in a small circle with the crate in front of you. She looks up and says, ooh, it's a little dark in here. And she herself begins to glow, almost like candlelight in this small, dim room. Just a bit of feedback. Uh, it probably wouldn't hurt just to get a little wider door. Then you wouldn't have to go through all this. Oh. <laughs> Well, that sounds very complicated to re-put the door onto the house. I don't, I think that I like the thing that I do better, honestly. But, oh, uh, as, as to it. Noted. So, uh, well, well, let's, let's see what's in this crate. And she flexes her fingers in front of her and you see the crate itself kind of almost the corporeal nature of it thin and inside of it through the crate itself you can see an object that as we go back to our quick start adventure inside King Emerus's package lies a massive stone with a lion's face carved into it Anora, because you have frequented the capital many times you would have entered through the southern gate to the city, the main gate into the city, and you recognize this immediately as the keystone of the capital city gate's main archway. The Arcanist nods sagely as soon as she sees it, saying, of course the king would keep this delivery secret. As I suspected, if anyone knew your, her city was no longer warded, you'd be conquered by sunrise. With this ominous warning, she looks around to the group. Well, we must travel to the open veil then to reinstate the ward. But such an effort of magic will attract dangerous creatures from the darkest reaches of the Sablewood. I'll need your help. You're coming along. Woo. We have to. My girl Marlo needs us. Oh. Marlo. Yeah. yeah. Marlo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I you know it. what's going on. 
Well, <laughs> when do you want to? When do you want to get started? When should we awake? Right now. now. Right now. Well, I don't yeah. know. And she kind of, she she kind of presses and shoulders. It's, it's awfully tight in here. And she, the the house kind of pushes back again and reforms to the correct size house. And she tithers over to her wall of fireflies and looks up and says, "You know, I have so many things to do. So many things to see today. I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe a." T- Ten day? Would a ten day work? Would all the fireflies uh, escape? Escape from no, the we, we we can only stay here for a few days. Mm, that's a good point. That's a good that's point. A good point. Well, so 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 we'll go in three Marlo. days. No, no, we can't do Marlo? that. What, what, what do you, well, I can't just be expected to drop everything at once. You know, there are things that I have to do. What? Hmm. I can, I, can uh, I come over to the firefly wall and look at what's going on over there? Sure. Look at the label. Sure. So you kind of walk up. Kind of walk over there next to her because she's there mm-hmm. too, right? Yeah, absolutely. And she kind of looks down to you because remember, this woman is yes. seven she's foot tall. More than double my. All height. of you guys are like four foot, so she truly <laughs> is looking down. Um, at you and she kind of uh, smiles gently and as you look up you see much what I had described previously but the difference is is that you can see the <laughs> the labels I'm laughing at Jean Screen's comment yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she uh, she all of the that's labels that's the plan Jean Screen that's the plan <laughs> <laughs> the labels on these jars have what appear to be names First, last, a dash, and a location. And again, in some of these jars, and in case you're not getting the scope, hundreds, maybe a couple of thousand of jars here on this wall. Very small vials. And all of, some of them have these dead fireflies and other of them have these very vibrant and alive fireflies that are flitting around inside. And she kind of watches them with a deep admiration and interest. uh, If maybe something a little dark behind her eyes. Can I ask her about the eyes? Sure you can. How are you asking it? How am I asking? Yeah, what Uh, are you saying? There was a snake in here, right? There is. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, what's with the eyes on the snake there? You kind of. Well, yeah. Over. We we've seen lots of eyes on lots of animals. Oh, the eyes you're seeing. Yes. Well, and she kind of turns away from you, and as she does, you actually see that at the nape of her neck is a her eye too. as well. She says. Well, dearies, how much do you know about the faint divinities? Mm. Well, then strap in. The faint divinities, you see, a long time ago, before you or I or any of these trees even, the whole entirety of the world was created by the now old and forgotten God. But then, of course, when new gods came, there was a great war, and and in that war, those new gods, they absconded to the, the hallows above and banished any of the gods that opposed them, the divinities, to the circles below. But that's not to say that some divinities don't still wander the plains here with us, sitting here next to us. And in fact, in the Sablewood, you are just, if not more likely, to come across one of those old forgotten gods, though we know not their names. But there are lesser divinities as well. Those who abs- those whose strength was lessened by the war and were not able to participate and so hid themselves away on the plain. It just so happens that here in the Sablewood, we have a resident faint divinity who 
will I pledge myself to Our Lady, the Spirit of the Wood, the Glimpse. Her name's the Glimpse? The Glimpse, absolutely. The Glimpse? You see, she, she's kept a watchful eye over this wood for oh, much longer than I've been around, and she looks a little bit sad at this moment. She, as she says, longer than I've been around, and then she continues, and that, you know, dear friend, she looks at you, Tank, you know that we tend to be short-lived, but, well, sometimes I think that I've overstayed my welcome on this mortal coil. I have a great island to retire to, if you're interested. An island? Well, that sounds lovely, but but who would take care of the wards? Maybe find an apprentice? Ooh, are you... Good to have a 401k, you know? Are you looking? Are you open for an opportunity? What's your magic capacity? And she kind of wa walks over to you and begins, like, pinching your muscles. And says, oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> She's yeah, checking all my time. magic went into those. <laughs> She's like <laughs> lifting your wings out. Because again, you are doll sized to her effect. Not doll sized, but very small. She's like lifting your wings yeah. and kind of admiring them. Oh, young. Only mid 20s, mid 20s as well. Did she say, oh, young? Mm -hmm. She sounded very excited about that. Okay, be careful. Maybe she is. <laughs> 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 I love Jean screen. Is she a druid? Because she's starting to sound like a cougar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after a moment of checking you over, she says, Oh, well, maybe in another few years you might be ready, but I don't think that anyone can help me for the time being. And uh, honestly, <laughs> Philosodad, with your consent, please. Mm -hmm. Absolutely a good point. She's <laughs> not very respectful. So. <laughs> but after a moment of checking you over, she does uh, kind of like smile sadly to herself and say, well, that wouldn't really be keeping up my end of the bargain anyway, would it? So, and she <laughs> goes back over to her wall of fireflies and looks up. So what, what's this uh, bargain you mentioned? She kind of eyes you and you see the coldness into her eyes again. And she looks you up. Blankly back at her. <laughs> <laughs> she, she looks back at you and, well, you know, with, with magic, nothing's ever free, is it? And I have always had a an eye for opportunity. <laughs> Are you rolling? No, so I dropped is. the dice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was you. I got so scared. I got scared immediately. I was like... <laughs> well, I love that. I'm going to have to start rolling for more. for free and then a roll? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming, guys. It really is coming. Like, at least so. But she, uh, she kind of looks sadly at you and says, you know, when I was young and foolish... There were a great many things that I desired, things that I would trade away, things that I bought. But now, bless only, only my one last and true hobby. And she looks up at the fireflies, and then she looks down to you, Jimbo, who's been opening the dialogue with her and says, by the way, how do you think you'll die? Uh, probably old, uh, and asleep, like in a bed somewhere. Mm, that's lovely. I, I hope that that happens for you, though. I'll be honest. And she wanders up to one of the fireflies that has died, and she kind of taps the glass. She says, not much fun for me, though, is it? My, my death or Cat. the fireflies? Cat. Cat. <laughs> oh no no these aren't well we're all becoming close friends today aren't we what if hmm, maybe we'll yes why not 
Well, uh, you know, as, as, as time goes on, and given that I haven't yet met my untimely end, and our dear spirit of the wood won't show me where my path ends, having given up my right to it, I do get to wondering sometimes what that might look like, and so I've begun watching others, watching to see in what ways people end. You know, I, 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 think, I think you all take it for granted, some of you, that being around forever would be lovely. Even, even the elves who live incredibly long have nothing compared to me. And you get tired, you grow wearisome of this plane sometimes. I do wonder when my next adventure will come to me. And so, sometimes I, I have a deal with the glimpse and if someone offers in trade or as a gift to me, she'll let me be a, well, a fireflyer, sorry, a firefly on the wall for that last moment. Gives oh, me so it's like a hobby. A yes. hobby, yes, absolutely. Like so those you... monsters who pin creatures. So you... You watch people die? Oh, yes, absolutely. Not not as often as I'd like, but uh, any chance I get. Okay. What have you learned from death so far? It's, it's a pretty gross thing, honestly. There's not much dignity in it most of the time. And honestly, mm -hmm. you know, because most of the people that I come in contact with are adventurers like yourselves, it's often gruesome you for example kind dwarven friend i know that you've said that you'll die old and in your bed but the odds are against you i hope you know traveling oh, yeah, and definitely. adventuring it's a goal uh, uh, one, one more question for you uh sure you get all these like eyes and stuff around you like to watch things die do you like <laughs> watch them die by looking through those eyes or... It's, it's hard to explain. It, the, the, the eye itself, and she kind of uh, rolls her neck a little bit in that erratic way. The eyes themselves are truly something that we use to see as much as they are our train to the spirit of the wood, our lady of eyes. So you have an eye on the back of your neck. Mm, I do, yes. And she kind of bends her neck, and you can see there at the nape that there is an eye kind of looking at you wide. It kind of blinks twice, and then skirts around looking at the others in the group. She's having to look, get really low for us to see. <laughs> she is. She, I, I'll say tiptoe. that instead she cranes back so that y'all are looking just like up at this eye. Oh, Jesus. Like, For a, like a giant, terrifying <laughs> statue. Yeah, absolutely. So, you like to, to watch people die. Yeah. It's creepy. That's, that's it's fine. Not... That's fine. That's normal. But you've got a lot of fireflies here. Are these your pets? No. Are they your, your family? No, no. These your are fire. These are all my bargains, my deals. All of these are tied to a person on the plane. And, you know, when that moment comes, I'll get to... Oh, 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 there, there. And you see one of the fireflies in the bottle begins to, like, slam against the little jar. And she kind of, like, looks up and her eyes dim to a gray color. And you see... As you're watching her watch the jar, none of you are privy to this sight, but you see the firefly slowly dim and go down to rest at the bottom of the jar, and then her eyes kind of come back to her in a fluttering manner, and she says, Oh, see, well, there's another one. That's more of a standard, I'd say. I think a heart attack, maybe. Sounds serious. Um, 
What? You just watched someone die? Yes. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Tr Tristale? Tristale? This one's an old one. It's hard to see. Tr Tristale Pope. Tristale Pope. Uh, Tristale Pope. What? When did they make this bargain with you? What did they bargain for? You know, I don't. I should start dating these, I suppose. I am <laughs> probably safety of some kind. You know, I'm an, I'm an incredible magic user. Uh, maybe you've heard I'm called the White Fire Arcanist. <laughs> I have heard, yes. Yeah, and I, I, I can help with a lot of things. Is anyone... Why are you... Are you interested... No, I was just curious, so you wouldn't, would you not just help us with Marlo's ward just to be nice? Oh, I of thought course. you and Marlo were friends. Of course oh, okay. I'll help with the ward. I, I, okay. I'm, I'm in a contract with Marlo. I have oh. to help with the ward. Wait, but... a contract? Well, let's like, go. A firefly on the wall? What, what are we waiting oh, for? Not that kind of contract. She's oh, wily. Oh, no, <laughs> I love one. it. Ugh. Oh. Oh. Nobles have very interesting deaths. She kind of eyes you a little bit up and down and smiles knowingly to herself. Honora shudders. She did not like that. So do you just like give gifts and then in exchange you get to watch them die eventually? Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, that's the that's the short and long of it. Absolutely. Okay, so like no other like. You get to keep them, keep their soul forever in a jar as a dead firefly. Oh, no, no. I wouldn't be interested in that in any way. I don't need any more dependents. Oh, okay. I was just curious because there was a bunch of dead ones in the jars. I, I didn't oh, know. If... Those are just ones that have passed. You know, every few years I do clean them out, but it takes a long time. I like to give them proper burials, and even small jars still have to be buried down pretty low. But they're not the souls of these people. They're, they're just a moment stored inside of this entity. And what kind of deals do you make with these people? All kinds of things. Sometimes people come through and they've lost their way. They need a bit of help. I've 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 helped people get out of trouble with the trees before. You know, that's always a fun one. Uh, I've. Um, I don't know. All kinds of deals. I've forged weapons. I've given. Introductions to our lady glimpse. All kinds of things. Uh, you sound like you might be interested yourself. Is there a deal you'd be after? Mm, no. Well, you just watch us die? That's you don't it. make us die quicker? No, no, no. No, you know. I've been wealthy and I've been poor. I've had less and I've had more. I find material things a bore. What I really like's a door or or a window rather. Do I have to think of what's to trade? Or is there something you're interested in? Do you have a menu? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, I don't just trade with anyone, but you are all adventurers. Spice it for me. What? What? Uh, how do you think that you might die, dear fairy friend? Hopefully, nobly, whatever that means. Oh, and I'll know it when I in see it. Battle, then. Perhaps. I can die in battle. I can die on the street. As long as I have a soap before I end up. I'm sorry, what was that at the very end? As long as nothing, you have nothing, a soap nothing. before a sheets? <laughs> before I end up in the sheets. Um, <laughs> oh, you sound like you're from my hometown. It's lovely to hear you. <laughs> I don't often hear the dialect. Mm. Yeah, be careful. Don't let him uh, drink too much and take a bath. He might, you know, almost drown. No, that's not something I'm interested in. Ooh, drowning, though. Hmm. It's rarer. Most people these Happens. days can swim. Um, Wasn't always the case. Armor does make it harder. So. Hmm. 
That's true. The floating problem. Or it'll be a horrendous fall down the side of the cliff. Oh, now that would be interesting. I don't think that's how I'd like to go. I I don't think think that's how I'd like to go, but that is the likely way. I I show people I show people up to the to the village. How do you think I might go? Deal gone wrong? That does seem accurate, doesn't it? But no. Eye infection on the back of your neck? Maybe. Oh, oh that wow, would be wild. That would be absolutely incredible, wouldn't it? Well, How do you keep your hair out the, of it? How big is the snake that's I don't. here? Um, it's a, it's a it's a pretty small snake, I'll say. It's um, it, it's it's not like a constrictor size or anything. Is it venomous? Voldemort snake? No, it it seems to be a non venomous kind of snake. I think. So you won't die by your snake. Oh, I I won't. No, no, she loves me. That's Sally. Sally's a friend. <laughs> hi, Sally. I don't like snakes, but hi. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more question about the, the animals roaming around with the eyes on them. Did they also make deals with the glimpse? How did they get their eyes? No, you know, most most of those, that just happens. Oh, they're just those, born like that? They're just born like that. In the woods of the glimpse, that is just kind of one of the things that happens. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess None of us are gonna like wake up with an eye on the back of our necks, huh? No, 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 no. You know, I only, I only made a deal on my side, you know, and and I, unless you were to trade something to the glimpse, you wouldn't have that. It's quite the trade, though. Spooks what? everybody around. Gives you a little bit of lore. I like that. I like being the spooky witch lady at the edge of town. Lives in a tree and a big fruit. It's pretty I fun. Make a trade for one of your teeth. <gasps> for one tooth? Which tooth? I prefer molars, if, but it may make it hard to chew, so whatever you can spare. A good base tooth. No, no, no. You have to demand a molar. You're going to lot. need... So... <laughs> So I love where Back you're going husband. with this. <laughs> this is going to be a roll. So oh, okay. you're going oh. to, at this point, I'm going to need a roll with your duality dice. I assume this is probably a presence check because you're trying to see if she'll make a trade for you with her teeth. She has limited teeth, you know? She just can't be trading everybody your teeth. But uh, but it's definitely an interesting one that I don't know if she would have heard before. So go ahead and make your roll for me. Give me a fear. Four with hope? Okay. A four with hope. Jesus Christ. All right. So go ahead and claim your hope on your character sheet if you're not already maxed out. (laughs) And then, uh, but unfortunately, that is a failure with hope. So she is going to kind of lick her teeth and say, you know, I don't think that I, I, I only have so many teeth, dear friend. I don't think that I could give you one of those for something. No, no. Plus... I'm sorry to say, but we fey folk, we don't live very long. If I stick around long enough around you, I might just see you, bleh, you know? Fair, fair. Yeah. But, you know, had to try. I had Fant- to try. I would, I would, if you think of something else, I'd love would it, it, anyone else. You I'm say not really made of anything. You know, your group, well, I have something. You know, I am under contract with Marlo and everything, but there's not really any time constraints on it. How much of a hurry are you in? Is it worth your time? Friend! Isn't oh. that your friend? Oh, no. Marlo's not a friend of mine. I just know her family. Well, we, we have to go now. She's got the wards. But I'm just... I'm so busy. I have all of these things to to care take. What are you and, doing? Well, exactly. right now yeah. I'm trying to make a trade. <laughs> busy work. 
I mean, if all you're needing is to, like, you know, get to watch one of us die eventually, and then we can get get, get this going, I mean, if that's all you get from like, our, our point of view, then... Are you gonna... Jim, no, are you no, gonna... No strings attached? Can I get this in writing? Oh, sure. If you want it in writing. And she kind of opens her drawer, and she has, like, little placards made up that say, like... I get to see you die. I have nothing else involved. You will get, and it has a, a fill in the blank, and she says, quick uh, ward renewal. And then she presses her thumb onto it, prints some ink, and she says, there, how's that? Right, can we add on there, and you can in no way, like, cause me to die early? Oh, oh, well, ooh, now that's a tricky one, because what if you tried to kill me? Except in self-defense. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And she kind of flips it over and you see her, like, scribbling. And she turns it over to you. Now, how's that look for you? I can already think of loopholes, but it's pretty good. <laughs> All right, absolutely. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I'll make a copy. And she kind of presses her palm onto it and presses her palm onto the desk. And a duplicate copy comes up. And she kind of tucks it away in her drawer. And she hands you the other one. Well, okay. The, the hand thing, or do I sign it? No, you don't have to sign it. That's more for you, Toots. Okay. Roll it up and shove it in. Right. Shove it in my poncho. Perfect, perfect. Well, sounds like we have a bargain then. Now, there is, of course, the matter of the event itself. So, and she kind of walks to the back of her home where you see a large fireplace that she would have to stoop to walk through, but is currently unlit. And you see that she places, uh, she digs into her pocket for a small something that she pulls out and is glowing. She places it into the actual soot. And as she does, it begins to expand like this portal that you could step through and you see through the fireplace now that there is a beautiful glen with more of those dark gray trees with all of those faces carved into it and in the very center a pale white birch that has just a single eye carved into it and she kind of gestures towards the fireplace. Hmm. Quick, quick question: uh, Are we going like is this to go? Get, is this to do the thing with the the warder, or is this to get a firefly? This... I was curious if I got a firefly. Uh, do, do, is there a firefly for my our deal now? Here there will be, but this will be okay. that. Yes, we'll fulfill oh, my oh. part of the bargain or your part of the bargain first, and then we'll get into mine. Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. Mm. So, okay. I'll need you to go through and touch the tree. That's it? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's all you Get gotta do. There. Good luck. I pat Jimbo on the back. Right. Okay, so you all are staying inside of the house. None of you are walking. Oh, no, Adora's through. gonna hop, a hop. She's not gonna go all the way to the tree, but she's gonna hop through and just wait by the like portal to go back to the house through the fireplace. Okay. She doesn't want to leave alone. Okay. He's doing a very noble thing. She didn't want to do it, so she doesn't want him to have to go alone because he's doing it. All right. Okay. And I run out there looking over my shoulder, like you mm. can see it, like just the outline, just a square on your side, floating there in the world of like the thing, and you can see the white fire arcanist stooped over, looking Ooh, at you, watching gross. hungrily as you go towards this tree. Uh, hi, hi, Mr. Tree or Mrs. Tree. The tree... Can I touch you? The tree doesn't speak, though the eye kind of looks at you. A blink once for yes, twice for no. <laughs> the tree is going to blink once. A long, slow, sweeping blink, and then it jolts back up and looking I'll, at I'll wait you. wait for a second one, and when one doesn't come, then I'll go, okay, I'll touch it. Okay. I am going to need you, Jimbo, to make a check. 
So as you reach out and touch this tree, there is a powerfully magical feeling that enters your chest. You almost can feel your hair lift as you're imbued with some arcane energy. You do I have hair. Talking, sorry, I was imagining you're talking about the, uh, what, the hair on my chest. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah, all of your hair, absolutely. <laughs> oh, and it begins to lift. And in that moment, I need you to make some kind of check to withhold there as well as you can. You can describe to me whatever trait you want to use. It probably cannot be agility because you're rooted to the tree. But everything- That's fine, I don't want it to be agility. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so what oh, would you- So I'm just trying to, I'm trying to hold myself against the tree or pull myself away from the tree. Keep yourself from pulling away. Yeah, I mean, I, I, your I, I, instinct right is to pull back away from it. This is an uncomfortable feeling. I mean, I, while doing that, I'll just kind of reach back, grab my pickaxe, and try to like latch it onto the other side to hold myself against it. Okay, okay, not you're not poking like, into the tree. Got it. You know, okay. I just kind of like to yeah, you know, pull myself, but then I look back. I'm touching it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, touch all the right, butt. you touch the butt. Absolutely. So <laughs> then. As part of this, what trait? What trait are you using? Is this like strength. a? No, go ahead, strength. Okay. Strength. Yeah. All right. So pure, you're pure muscle. Go ahead and make a roll for me. Alrighty. Get it. That is. What number is it? That's a three, and that's a four. Okay, that's a seven with hope. Man, y'all are so good at rolling with hope these days. All right, gain your hope. But on a seven, you are not going to succeed the check and you are blasted backwards a touch. And you now hear all these chittering in the woods as a ton of animals with those eyes on the back of their necks are all filling the glen and looking down at you from the treetops. They're nearby you watching again. All right, so you were unsuccessful in that attempt. The eye kind of closes itself and then again looks. Oh, that was a no. I'm so sorry. Can, can Anora come up if he tries again and like help push him to keep him on the tree? Right. So that ain't kind of touching it? <laughs> Does that count? Door. Like that electricity? <laughs> like she tries to push him and like keep him stuck on there, like I double think, the strength. Sure, I think that that would help. Um, While you're doing that, I'm gonna. Like, you can my, do uh, it. Grapple, get my grappling hook and like, we'll chunk it around and you know, pull me tight. <laughs> I am going to say that for the for so as you attempt again, though, I was going to say that you were at disadvantage because this is the secondary check on this, but because you're getting a help action, it will just be a standard roll again. So you can okay. go ahead and try. Here we go. Uh, that's better, but worse at the same time. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a sixteen with fear. Okay. All right. Great. You look too happy about that. I Rachel. haven't gotten a new fear from you guys in forever. All right. Great. So, um, I get to take one of your fear tokens then. Oh, gems. And at this point, so sixteen, you said. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. The the. The difficulty was fairly easy in this case. It was only a 10. <laughs> it okay. was just pretty low. Hard to roll that high. Yeah, absolutely. But really- Give me my firefly. <laughs> <laughs> really what I was looking for though, was more so kind of the telling of once you succeeded the check, what you see. So in this moment, as you make contact with the tree and Anora for you, you feel his body go rigid as the pulse of this vision is there in front of him. So, Jimbo, as you look into this eye, which has opened fully, widely, and is terrifying, you are going to see a brief glimpse of this glade before it was inhabited by anything else when only one tall white figure stood there. 
though now this white birch. In this vision, it's difficult to see what this is because of the incorporeal nature of it. But you see some kind of entity with one large eye glowing in the center of what would be a face. No mouth. A jaw that protrudes forward deeply with, again, no mouth. And sharp razor edges protruding from the skull, uh, almost in the shape of a crown. And as it turns to you, you see it begins to erratically move nearer to you through this empty space. And it leans down to you. It is terrifying. Um, and for those of you who are watching that are familiar at all with Darrington Press, I'm taking inspiration from this character, from the Queen of Dreams, from the new For the Queen card game that Darrington Press has introduced, if anybody has any interest in looking that up. Um, but... I now want you to explain Jimbo, and because of that fear, I and I was going to remind this in case it was new players. It's less of a concern in that it, for you because I know you're more comfortable with this. But I am going to ask you to explain your death that you see in the future, but you have to because of that fear, make it unpleasant. But remember, and this is the warning I was going to give to my new players, just because you see a vision of the future does not mean that it cannot be changed. Destiny is malleable and things like that. Um, so remember, we can fight against that tide if we want to in the future. Jimbo, what do you see? Take us there. Definitely he's back underground somewhere and there's some massive bug that is like has wings and is trying to take him and some of his people like out of the place when he's like trying to fight it off and just getting slaughtered. Oh uh, my gosh. Kind of like in the distance you can see his party. Uh, but yeah, so he's back home, not going well. Something, some big monster is terrorizing his home. Uh, and yeah, his attempt to stop it did not go well. Oh, and the party is there like in the distance kind of. Er, er, yeah, they're in the back with also, uh, you know, I'm, trying, I'm blanking on his name from uh, last time, uh, Bruni. Uh, him and some of the other uh, Jimbo's uh, relatives be there kind of, you know, they're safe in the moment. But for himself, you know, he's getting dragged away into the sky or out of the uh, out of the cave. Okay. While dying. Oh, into the yang roots. Oh, into the yang roots. Absolutely. <laughs> beautiful and terrible thank you so much for sharing that that was wonderful and gruesome um okay in that moment as you see that flash in front of your eyes you feel a pulse of energy and from your chest as the glimpse this shape that is in front of you pulls their forehead back from yours. Out of your chest, you see a small flicker of light in the air, and the glimpse reaches out its hand and holds it there in front of it and closes their long, spindly fingers quietly and then releases them. Now, at this point here in this glade, you... <gasps> <laughs> back into the now and Anora describe what Jimbo's face looks like as he turns back to you very very pale he's got a pinched expression like he's like physically in pain right now it's just he's very clammy too and I'm going to have both of you take a stress point of stress oh, in this moment okay okay well i touched it uh, time days time to go on back to the room are you okay what you look stressed are you okay uh, i'm good what's, what's happening i'm just fine okay 
So, all right. Weird so plan. As you guys now are exiting through this, and again, the Arcanist now just like looking with Jesus wide Christ. eyes through the gateway, just so hungry for this information. All of the creatures here in this glen that are staring down at you are absolutely silent. And you watch as the tree loses a single leaf that flutters down to the ground. And then trailing you as you're walking back, those of you still in the room, you see floating behind a small firefly, a small moat of light. And as you get back to that threshold and walk through inside of the house, you see, I want to keep call her a hag, but she's just not, she's not a hag. She, 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 she is a, an arcanist. She stands there with a small vial and she claps the firefly into it. And then you see her take her nails in and a little label affixes to it that says, Jimbo dash, where is your, what is your home called? Uh, I don't think we ever came up with a name on that. It's okay. There on that label that has appeared, you see your name, a dash, and then the name of your home where you will die. Ooh. The, uh, the <gasps> oh, that's so chat. jimbled that, that. here. <gasps> that's yeah, beautiful. Go. I love that. Okay. So that's what you see affixed. So again, the arcanist smacks the firefly into this small vial, caps it with a cork. Go ahead. We get one more label. I want to name the firefly. Can you can be uh like can we spell like delight? Let's call him delight. I, I, I want to name the I want to name the firefly. I she thought kinda... he was named your name. What? He's not. I thought it was he's... a representation of. Sure, yeah, but you can, can have whatever name you'd like. I think that's very kind of you. If Absolutely. I get a burial and he gets a burial. He should get his own little tombstone. Okay. True. So You're right, right underneath I'm it, sorry. she's gonna pop a secondary label from her finger label maker that is there says D light. Is that what yep, you said? Yep, 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 yep. Absolutely. A stripper of a firefly. A stripper Perfect. name. Yeah. Oh, I was uh, you pronounce it just a Dwight or Dwight. Oh, Dwight. No. Oh, that's so D cute because light. Oh, I don't know if that's where you're going with it, but that's yeah, not totally with an office, a lame office reference. Yeah, listen, I love it. And Dwight Schrute, he runs a beet farm. <laughs> this firefly came from a beet farm. Got Jimbo and Dwight, yeah. And then in that moment, and again, there is just this. The White Fire Arcanist always emits a subtle glow. But in that moment, as you are all watching her, you swear there is just a darkness about her. Although it's not there in physicality, you all feel this sense of darkness in this moment. And she kind of opens the palm of her hand and watches as the jar kind of floats up and affixes right above the mantle there your someday death a dark window into the very moment that you leave the mortal coil. Oh, well, I hope it's entertaining for you. I can't wait to see what happens, but no spoilers. I like it to be it, fresh in the moment. It's going to it's gonna be uh, the, when I eventually get him into the hot springs. And yeah, just, just to warn you, I had, a, I had a very long gray beard. It's far from the future. You got to wait a long time. Sorry. <laughs> Steven, as an FYI, I think when you're talking, you fade off at the end, usually like a sign that you're getting quieter as you trail. <laughs> mm, thank you. Okay. So, and with that, with a sense of finality, you see the Arcanist imbued with a new kind of fervor for this, for what has gone on. She begins gather. I love Kayla's face throughout this because she is just not into this character. I don't like it at all. I don't like her. <laughs> She's not cool. Don't bear cash money. Uncomfortable. Not cash money at all. Cash money at all. That's right. We're going to go do the thing now. We're going to go put it up and be done. So she kind of turns to you and says, well then, 
let's let's get going. A very urgent package, and we wouldn't want anyone to die. I don't think I've collected any of their moments anyway. No. So let's let's get started then. Immediately to the open veil. Shall we go? Yes. Onward. So she again is going to wave her hands the house as you guys have all seen though not grown accustomed to yet unfurls yet again you step outside and the house with a wave of her hand furls back closed the crate skipping out as fast as it can to miss getting closed into the house and she does a very brief whistle and you see that fruit slowly ascend back into the tree and at this point she is going to take out of her pocket again another one of those small motes uh it looks like an acorn but it is glowing and she takes it and says okay now stand back and plants it right under the ground and spits onto the soil there, covering it with her palm, and a small glow emanates from where she stood. And at this point, you see, again, a portal begin to grow. This time, though, it starts as a small sapling tree. And as the sapling grows, you begin to see a split there in the center of it. And it creates this large archway. Large enough for, if you wanted, your carriage to part through. But you can see through this archway now a dark and dim landscape. A beautiful open glen. A glade, a veil. Um, here, presumably in the midst of the Sablewood. Though you do note that here it is still early in the day while there it looks darker as though some time has passed and at this point she waves to you are you taking your carriage yeah but she fits right in the carriage isn't she yeah the she, firefly fairy? She, she no no she she could fit she could fit in the carriage remember the carriage is like large the normal person size, person size okay. carriage yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. you're normal people mm-hmm. yeah yeah okay we take the carriage yeah, i want to ride on the just... crate i know that's not a thing you but... can why not i like, can yes, i can ride on the crate absolutely yeah okay yeah like uh it kind that's of where... scuffles yeah. down for you and you hop up onto <laughs> it is very big yeah mm-hmm. As we're leaving, yeah, I'm at uh, side saddle because I'm a lady. Absolutely. There you go. Mm-hmm. On the way out, do I want to ask, like, hey, Ted, can you uh, can you take a look at something for me, just just in case I kind of like lift up my hat? Oh. Can you like take a look at the back of my neck, just like, am I, am I good? Is he good? I will let you choose because what? I what? am okay with it being. Again, I do not believe in impressing something onto someone's physicality for their character as a GM. It's not my style. Yeah, let, me, let me know. Yes. There's not. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, this, it could be anything. Kind of, I had thought it, at it, one point of it being... You know, uh, we'll just have to make sure we keep a, a little bit of moisture back on there, so we'll just have to wipe the back of your neck off everything. I don't know about that. Why? I mean, you don't want it to get infected. What? My neck? The eye. Too? There's a, you said there wasn't an eye. No, there is an eye. Oh, shit. Wait, there's no. Not, he, there's, no, there's, there's, not, really? there's not actually an eye, but Ted is definitely telling Jimbo that there is an eye. Put the hat back down. Just kind of tuck it down a little bit. <laughs> get, get in the carriage. Okay. Okay, fantastic. And you begin to move through that portal. Now, as you move through the portal, it is again dark here. So we are moving into the final act of... Yeah, (laughs) sorry. The final act of this quick start adventure. It is act five. Did y'all know that we've been through four acts at this point? Isn't that crazy? Anyway, this this is act five, the war renewal. So 
on direction from the arcanist and again i have flavored this significantly but on direction from the arcanist your carriage pulls into a mysterious clearing in the shape of a circle the only area of the sable wood you've seen without trees to block out the sky this is the open veil now as you guys are going through immediately you notice that the sorry gene screen in chat is always making me laugh because ted was very misleading with that moment <laughs> i was myself very confused like so um as you enter through this entrance into the open veil it is dark um the sun has just set because you can still see a glimpse of blue along the horizon as it's settling and you can see stars in the sky that are beginning to peek through. You also feel a chill in the air here, but more than that, you all feel what is intensely magical energy in this glade. Now. For those of you who are not magical, maybe this isn't as noticeable for you, but a Nora especially as a bard, and I know that others have magical abilities as well, but they are more secondary. A Nora, your primary combat style is magical in nature. This is, it gives you a moment of awe and reverence stepping into this glade because of how magical it feels and Jimbo I would say for you it feels almost reminiscent of the moment that you touched that tree though different okay all right not super important but I do bring out that uh, broken or not broken that toy compass that we got from our, it was like a present or socks or shoes or whatever I'm just like looking at that and like looking for some kind of direction like this feels weird I'm gonna say that throughout your adventures in Hush and everywhere, it was kind of just flimsily pointing in a direction. And as you step here, it just is spinning. Oh, I don't like that. I'll put it back away. <laughs> <laughs> he said, nope. Nope. And at That's this not point, fun. He... Need more solid foundation, rocks. <laughs> You do see some rocks here, by oh, the great. way. Yeah. Now Born this is more. beautiful. It's 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 kind of a meadow. <laughs> it's very lush and green. Be lined the rock. Yeah. But there are the rock. <laughs> there are several large boulders. Um, one in particular near the edge of the distant that you can see. One large boulder that you can see that's kind of flat on the top. Um, but as you pull through this entrance, the arcanist begins to speak again, and she is a bit excited. She looks to Anora and says, well, now, no immediate transport is, is flawless, and this one takes a few hours, of course, but at least we weren't held up in that carriage. Uh, so we'll, we'll get that up and running for you as quickly as we can. But look, the open veil. Now, this is a very old place. Not quite as old as where you've just been, of course, but a strong place of ritual magic. It's where the first ward was forged and where I forged all of the ward pillars that surround Hush. I thought I would die then. But did you think you would, you would die? She seems kind of hesitant to speak about it, and the eye on the back of her neck as she moves past you a little bit begins to, like, flit back and forth around at the clearing. And you hear her tone kind of deepen, and she says, Well, that's a story for another time, I think. But the power here does remain. And if I can find the ley line of energy and where it's moved and shifted to, then I'll be able to restore that ward stone. So, everyone, 
take a moment amongst yourselves and I'm going to look. And she begins walking around the glade, you can see, muttering to herself with her antennae, kind of do 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 do, like uh, <laughs> looking around and sensing the magical ley lines of energy. All right. So is there anything that you guys want to do in this moment to prepare yourself? Because remember, she has told you that this ritual is going to summon things that are going to be drawn by the power of this. Oh. Ed's going to try to like find a, a spot where he can climb up a little bit to kind of survey the area. Okay. Get a good like battle strategy kind of put up. Okay, I'm going to say on the east side of the clearing, there is quite a large boulder, uh, probably slightly taller than you, if you want to amble up onto it and keep an eye out. Okay. I'm going to go find a big rock and just give it a, you know, a good hug and like try to lift it, but it's more just to, you know, really feel the weight of the rock. Okay. Uh, make it feel oh. better, but then I'll just hide behind the rock. Okay, all right. Yeah. Assuming it's a sturdy rock. Okay, there is there is the same rock that uh, that Ted is on, if you'd like, but there are of large sizes. There's kind of a on the west northwestern side of this clearing. There's kind of a pillar shaped rock that almost is the same size as you. You could hide behind very well and very huggable. Okay, great. It seems like a good huggable rock. Okay, great. Yeah, you're hiding back behind that. Anyone else? I'm going to plant my little acorn that I got from the uh, inn in case I die here. Oh, oh. okay, great. Yeah. Adora's going to hang back. She's still on the crate, but she's got like her little spell book and she's just like anxiously running her hand over the front of it. Just just watching, hanging back with her little spell book. Okay. Scared. Yeah. If I'm trying to actually hide behind. Oh, me, that's good. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say if I'm trying to hide, I'm actually trying to use my like class feature hide. Do I need to like mark a stress? If you're for that as well? if you're trying to do that, yes. If you are preparing yourself in the hidden now before we enter combat, then yes. Okay. If I fly before combat, <laughs> how fast is this minute happening? You know what I mean? It's pretty fast. <laughs> <Do> I... <laughs> <laughs> but I will. I'll, I'll tell you what. I can give you. I can give you a heads up the moment that it is happening and you can kind of, it's very common in Dungeons and Dragons, people who have certain boots to kind of click their heels and say, aha, I've activated the thing. I'll let you get that off. That's fine. Okay. And then if I have a stamina potion, could I use it now? Yeah, you certainly could. Absolutely. Are you taking your stamina D4, potion? Four, right? Yep. You're going to roll a d4 and... That's the pyramid, yep. And whatever the top point lands on is how many slots you're gonna clear. Oh, that's clear three. Plus. Yeah, I think so, right? Yep, that's clearing stress. Remember your health potions, whatever y'all selected at character creation, you should either have a health potion or a stamina potion. Health clears those those hit points and your, uh, your stamina potion clears stress. I'd pick the health potion, but that was before they changed the rules to where hiding requires stress. <laughs> it's fine. You can stress. You I can changed stress. mine too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Anything else that y'all are doing? Because again, she's muttering, but her mutter is getting more fervent. Oh, I was going to have uh, Bill go uh, stand near Nora uh, as like Thanks. a bodyguard. She's very happy. That is so cute. I love this. Frog and a rooster. We love yeah. the good rooster. Okay. All We're right. We're very animal heavy party. Y'all mm -hmm. are. You really are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So, the arcanist, you see her stop suddenly on at that far edge of the clearing where that large rock is that's kind of flat in nature. And you see her clamber up onto it. And as she kind of sniffs around you see her jerking movements and she shouts out to the party stop stop yes here here now crate and she kind of waves the crate over 
Uh, Anora, are you still sitting on? You've gotten off of the crate at this point. Right? I was, I was on the crate. Well, still. the crate I was still is beginning kind of to run over to the Arcanist. Would you He's like to slip jump off? off? Yep. Okay, all right, you're gonna yeah. slip off. Not to... gracefully. All right, <laughs> no problem. So you slip off there, and the crate is running full sprint over, and you see it down at the bottom here, like kind of trying to get up onto this rock, but can't. And you see her say, "You useless and." Pfft with some magic kind of summons it up on top of the rock. It kind of whimpers before furling its legs back in upon itself and rests there. And you see her kind of clap and it splays out the same way that her house did often. And there rests that giant. And remember, this is very large. I, I, I think I've mentioned it a couple times. It's a big rock that is in the shape, a stone carved in the shape of a lion's head. At this time, she stands over this stone and over this crate humming. Her body starts to glow brighter, flickering in the night. And she says, enjoy the night air while you can and say any prayers to whatever divine you worship. We'll be busy very soon. And at this point, the arcanist you watch for a few seconds longer before, <gasps> and her head tilts back behind her. In that moment, you see her eyes go a pure white. And she, with her eyes lifted towards the sky, her body begins to lift from the ground, glowing this bright white light. And you hear her tone shift. It is no longer the voice that you've been hearing. And now it is an ancient and deeper voice that says, the keystone has responded. Quickly, surround me. The ritual must begin or she'll lose the pathway. Hurry. And as her body begins glowing brighter and brighter, you see the stone itself lifting above her body and up far above the treetops. Her body is hovering only a few feet off of the top of the stone, maybe six to seven. And in this moment, you all hear, oh, I'm not going to do the sound effect because I want to be respectful. At table, I would, okay? But we all have headphones on, but you hear, prepare yourself, kind of a, <laughs> like a shriek from off in the woods. Uh, an unearthly cry echoes from the woods, alerted by the arcane energy. So I have a battle map prepared. First, a little shift in music. This is going to be one of those things that I do in post. That music was so relaxing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so relaxing. <laughs> and yet, here we go. Okay. So, for my players, I have, as I've done previously, put the pictures of the battle map into the Discord. Anybody who follows our Discord, you can see it there as well in the label that's like, don't look before stream um, if you want to see the actual images of the map. You can also now see it on the stream. And anybody in chat, please let me know if you're hearing an echo, though you shouldn't be because I fixed it. Um, so to give you an idea of the way this looks, right, is that you can see on the southwestern side a trail that bends to this open clearing. Here inside of this clearing, you can see that there are boulders, rocks placed at different areas. At the far north end, on top of one of the rocks, you can see the arcanist there hovering in midair. And if you're looking at these images, I want to draw your attention to something before we fix everything up. Anywhere that there is an enemy, I have highlighted the top of it in red to make it stand out for you. The arcanist, the top of hers is in blue so that you can more easily see her as well. Your standees are there and now I'm going to take a moment to shift you guys before we get started. So, we said that 
For example, Jimbo, you are back here behind this rock. Oh, oh no, my rock. Oh, this is this is fiddly, huh? This is my I love first... the rocks. Thanks. Good touch. This is my first time actually using this, okay? And then we said that Anora is up here at the entry area. So she's here at the edge of the glen tank. I think you were where were you? you were in the center somewhere burying an acorn, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Ted, you were on top of this rock, but I don't know if I can get you to stay there, so I'm just gonna- No, that's fine, just right you can set me it. next to it. And we know yeah, that Ted fine. is there with Anora. All right, the Arcanist is back here at the back. And I think at this point, this is basically where we are, guys. So. Is uh, Ted with Anora or Bill with Anora? Bill, Sorry. Bill should be Bill, with Bill, Bill oh, is okay. with Anora. Yeah, good catch. Thank you so much. Um, I will say as well, I'm going to show very briefly the enemies. So I'm going to describe these in a moment. But this is an ancient skeleton. I know it's hard to see. These Dick. are ancient skeletons. And then these guys are very difficult to see. They are forest wraiths. Kind of spirits of the wood. Totally the smog monster from Fern Gully. It does remind me of that. Mm -hmm. Tim Curry. Absolutely. Oh, All right. Nexus? Nexus? I can't remember. Hexus. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. So, at Did this, the action tracker come out? The action tracker is absolutely right here. And we will rally as soon as I give my description. I think that you can kind of see that on the screen. Perfect. Okay. All right. So, in this moment, all of you remember looking up at this near limp body of the arcanist glowing a bright vibrant supernova white in this clearing blotting out the stars in the skies she is so bright uh, you feel a rumble as four ancient skeletons emerge from the ground kind of <clears throat> clawing themselves out of the dirt and standing there with their weapons their rusted swords in hand disturbed by the forces of magic being used by the arcanist in the distance Two forest wraiths float ominously towards you. Now, this is going to introduce a new mechanic, which is very heavy in Daggerheart as part of a GM thing, which is a countdown die. A countdown die is going to, in this case, I'm choosing a D8, and I'm starting the countdown at eight. Now, I'm not going to tell you the particulars of how this is going to function, but your goal is to get down to zero, okay? When you kill your first enemy, let me know and we'll proceed from there, okay? So I'm placing that on an eight right now. Okay, um, so this is going to tick down one number at a time and at this point, I think we're ready to begin. So, you guys see all of these skeletons pop up. Anora, right where you are, two skeletons pop up immediately beside you. Tank, one pops up to your left. Uh, Jimbo, where you are, you can see a few feet in front of you that a, for, that a skeleton has popped up, but you do also hear behind you a as a wraith begins to careen out of the woods. Similarly for you, uh, Ted, you can hear the shuffling of a mist behind you. Oh, does the mist shuffle? I don't know. You hear something creepy and spooky coming out from behind you. Or wafting. Wafting. Yeah, it's okay. all wafty. So, can are there any questions as we dive in? And somebody let me know what you're doing. Starting maybe with Anora in this moment right. of fear. She's got to. She's got to. She's got to rally him. And she's got him right next to you. How far away is is Jim, Jimbo? 
Jimbo is is uh, let's see, he, he's gonna be in the close range. I, I'm gonna say that everything is basically close. Not okay, very. So everybody close, can but hear close. me. Though. Everyone can hear okay. you. Yes, okay. absolutely. So, but she's gonna look at Jim specifically, and she's like, "You know, you're not gonna die today, mm-hmm. and neither are we. So oh, let's go nice. give him hell, boys." <laughs> That's and give thing. me a thumbs up to yeah. like a shh. I'm, I'm hitting. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> okay, great. That's amazing. Uh, and that gives everyone a D6 to use, mm-hmm. right? So everyone mm-hmm. make sure you have a D6 in front of you that you can then use to funnel an attack or uh to add into damage that you want to utilize later, okay? All right. Yeah. And does I so I'm not I'm gonna count that as an action. But yeah, I yeah. did say that your flight, as you are seeing this begin to happen, Tank, you can fly before. So, are you taking flight? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, so, you are now considered to be flying. What next? What are we doing, guys? Yeah. I'm going to cast my Vicious Entangle spell okay. on... Uh, <gasps> the skeleton that is closest to Bill and Anora. Okay. Okay. Um That's this guy. Yeah. All right. Uh that's a 13 with hope. A 13 with hope. Okay, so first mark your hope, make sure that you're doing that. Um, and then for this, I'm so sorry, this is actually on two pages, which I should have cut these out before. Oh, it's actually a 15 with a, All right. a plus two. Absolutely is going to hit. So yes, absolutely that's going to hit. Tell me what this skill does. I assume this is one of your domains. This is, this is. So I make a spell cast roll, which I did against yes. the target within far range okay. on a success Roots and vines reach out from the ground and temporarily restrain them, dealing 1d8 physical damage. Okay. On a success, you may also spend a hope, a hope to temporarily restrain any enemies that are very close to your target. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend that hope that I just got from rolling with hope. Well, and, uh, nothing is I, very close to him. Nothing is very close. No, that's not quite close enough. That's close, but they're not very close. I was going to ask, what is um, very close on the map? Actually, I guess we could give it a shot, right? Because, like, it's a card. Um, Yeah. I I think maybe the one, at least the two. You know what? You're right. right. You're right. Nora. You're right. I'm going to say that that's very close. Remember that our distances in this are kind of loosey goosey, but. but very close is the distance of like a playing card's short side. Close is the distance of a pencil. Uh, far is the standard length of a sheet of paper. And then very far is basically anything that you can see. So that's kind of it. So yes, great, okay. great point. We're going to count that as very close. So you're going to spend a hope. Go ahead and mark that off. And it's going to entangle this one as well. Okay. Um, does it do damage guys, to both of them? It just does damage to the first okay. one, but they are both restrained. Okay, amazing. Um, All right. And so, then I'm going to use that D6 rally dice to do some extra damage to this first guy. Ooh, amazing. Okay. Um, that'll be seven physical damage. Okay, seven points of physical damage. So... Uh, so I, that's going to be the vines themselves, right? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I would say that the vines, um, they kind of like shoot out from the ground, like all around the feet of the first one and like kind of like bring it to its knees almost. Make it like, crush it. him because you've killed this first one. Make it yeah, crush okay. him, Steven. So then, yeah, mm-hmm. like all the way up through like the rib cage and like kind of like smashes the vertebrae and like pulls it down to the ground. Um, And then uh, a couple of vines will shoot out to the guy to the side and just like root his feet to the ground so you can't move any closer. Okay. I love the the cinema of this moment because there, Mm -hmm. Anora, you surrounded by these two guys, Mm -hmm. Ted from a distance, 
kind of sees you and immediately casts this spell. You see these vines kind of this one that goes and this other one is now kind of stretching against its vines but is stuck. Okay, and that is going to be one additional action that I get to place. Uh, I want to hop out from my hidden spot uh, and jump up to this um, I blanked out what you called him I have white stuck in my head but that, no that's not what it is Wraith, a wraith. A wraith. Yep. <laughs> right, not, not oh, the wraith the, the ancient uh, skeleton yes the ancient skeleton so uh, I yeah, out, yeah. you know stealthily with my giant pickaxe and just you know right in the vertebrae okay uh, alright fantastic oh yeah. before we do that you in that moment that you kill that first one, I am going to tick down your counter by one. Oh yeah, now sorry, I forgot to. Okay, you see you. during that ticking moment, a little pulse of energy and that lion-shaped stone begins to glow slightly brighter. Okay, all right, go ahead, Jimbo. Oh, Sam, jumping out from being hidden, so I believe I have advantage. So I just have a second hope die. Absolutely. And then I'll have my fear die, and I'm also going to spend uh, two hope into this to get extra d6 toward my sink attack okay um, so i'll have yeah okay so I had to call that up first um yeah. cool so i'm going with the advantage die so that is uh, 17 with hope 17. okay yes absolutely hits and make sure to mark your hope if you didn't already spend it you just get to keep that one it's fine you're not reducing y'all are rolling so well I spent two, so I'll get one back. Uh -huh. and, okay. Cool. And then for damage, that is 19, or sorry, uh, 21. Nope, doing bad math here. 22 points of physical damage. Oh, amazing. Okay. All right. So you come out. Now you describe to me, because this is going to do his major damage, and that's going to knock him out. You tell me how it looks as you do this. Basically, just emerging out from behind the rock, do a quick spin and just pickaxe and come around just right into his spine uh, and just pull out part of the vertebrae. And I assume he just falls apart there. Absolutely. And then I'll, if I can, I would like to then just basically continue that move back away from back to the other side of the rock okay. uh, to attempt oh. to hide again from you, the right. You from the cannot other side. because you can move before yeah. your action or after your action, oh. but not both. So yeah, cool. that's going to be all right. Cool. Stop here. Okay, great. So give me one moment. All right. Okay. Okay. So in this moment, I am going to interrupt play. No one has used fear. So to do that, I have to spend, uh, oh man, I forgot what it was. I think it's, two. I think it's, it's two. two action tokens, I think to do that. Mm. So I'm going to go oh. ahead and use two of my action tokens to do that, but I'm also going to utilize one of my fear. And for this tank, I'm going to use one of your fear to regain those same two tokens. So this is fueling that action economy that we have here in the map. So I have three in this moment, and I'm going to start by queuing up these, hmm really want to do this thing you know what i'm gonna so i'm going to spend one more fear like so for this i should be gaining two more action tokens but instead uh and by the way again our tick has moved down one so it's now at six remind me of that guys as you kill opponents we're ticking down that counter um you. For those two that I gained, because I just gave myself four, for the first two, I'm actually going to use them to invoke an environment feature called Vengeance of the Veil. So, with Vengeance of the Veil, this pulse of arcane energy as that die ticks down once more. You feel, all of you, the arcane energy in this mist surrounding you. And two more skeletons are going to crawl up from the ground. This time, I'm going to have them appear here around Tedios. All right? So... I should really check the ground before this. 
Uh huh. And again, they're <laughs> coming out of the ground at you. And so, at this point, I'm going to use one of my action tokens, and I'm going to utilize a group attack as these three skeletons now to you, Stephen, against Hedios. They are coming in to make an attack. So, this is my die that I have for the night. And, okay, that is a natural 19, so I assume that that is going to hit. Good thing they forgot about me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, 19 is my evasion. Oh, it is? Wow. No, no, 11, 11, 11 is my evasion. I was like, that would be absolutely wild. Okay, all right. Okay, so a 19 is going to hit, and so with that, the mechanic here is that all three of them are going to go towards you dealing four physical damage each so they are all converging upon you as a horde and with that doing 12 points of damage to you i don't even have to roll for that that's just how it works so how what of your thresholds are we in with 12 so you're in my major threshold. Okay. Um, I'm gonna use two armor slots. Okay. To go ahead and reduce that to my minor threshold. And so take I'll one take... hit point. Uh huh. Okay. Fantastic. I love that. All right. I'd okay. say like as they were like coming in to swing on him, he probably would have lifted uh his like little buckle shield up and like taken most of the hits to that but like now it's kind of like not wanting to stay on uh like the handle well. okay all right yeah absolutely that's amazing so as they come in kind of grasping and clawing at you you're holding your shield up and kind of cowering down below it and it's causing them to gain, gain kind of an aggressive nature as they're trying to put the damage into you, uh, but not quite getting through. Fantastic job at kind of evading that. And now I am going to move into my, still have two action tokens right now. I'm going to move into my next attack. So with this, I am going to move into one of these rates. And I'm going to just keep going at Oh, no. I'm going to start with Jimbo, okay? So you hear, as you sneak back in, barely seeing this wraith, because it's incorporeal. It just looks like a glistening mist. But you hear there, as you hide behind the rock, kind of a... Oh, wait, you haven't moved back, because you couldn't. That's right, I'm so sorry. Um, you hear the... And it is going to glide forward towards... No, actually, it doesn't even have to. That's right. It's going to glide forward towards you, God. And it is going to make an attack against you. So... Oh, hey, buddy. Yeah. It's nothing to worry about. Okay, that is going to be... Plus the three is going to be a 16 to hit. That will beat my invasion. Okay. All right. So, in this case, it is doing an action called a memory delve. So, I feel horrible for this because you've had a hard day already. But yeah, it's fine. Double down. You are going to, in this moment, it is going to fly into melee with you as it's making this attack. And you see, as it comes into melee with you, it is kind of pressing down, bearing into you, and is going to reach out one of its long, slender hands and graze it upon your cheek. And in that moment, I need you to describe for me a moment of terror from Jimbo's childhood. This is like a Dementor from That's Harry Potter, like guys. Dementia, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's and so cool. give me a description. Uh, let's see. Jimbo's childhood. Uh, he's probably on a little adventure and almost fell off a cliff. Uh, but, but, but didn't. But it was real mm. scary because he was like only like a foot tall then. 
Oh, no, baby. This, this is filtering into your fear of heights that you have, right? Oh my gosh, it's so scary. Okay, all right. So this is <laughs> scarier because this does a D20 plus two magic damage. Whoa, so let's see. Does armor work against childhood trauma? I, I, absolutely. No. Yes, it does. Because remember that armor is is kind of loosey goosey in this as well. You can steal yourself with fortitude. You're still gonna mark the slot. But all right, that is unfortunately a seventeen plus two for a total of nineteen magic damage. Oh, I assume that's your major threshold. Uh, nineteen goes into my severe. So relatable. Uh, and then I will. Go ahead and drop it down. I'll use three armor slots to bring it to minor. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. So you're bringing that to minor, which is fantastic. Now, this is magic damage specifically. I don't think that that matters for your characters, but the piece that you need to understand is that in this moment, because of this, though you're not taking any additional stress, the impact of this moment leaves you feeling shaken as it stands there with its cold hand across your cheek and you are taking on the condition of vulnerable so i have advantage against you for the duration of the fight okay you actually will be able to remove vulnerability at the next rest that we take okay I still have one action token before I relinquish it back to you that I am going to now spend, and I'm going to activate the second wraith. This wraith is going to come up to you, Ted. So this- To me? Yep, to you, because that's where he is. He's back there near you. I'm so gonna get in there. <laughs> Hang on. So this okay, guy, yeah. this is my last really item. So he's- taking in my opinion the scariest ability that they have um so let's go ahead and cue that up i'm going to make an attack roll come on all right all right that is a dirty 20 so 17 plus their three so i know that that's going to hit and on this they are using their attack called pass through they are going to, in this moment, they're not even technically targeting you. They're actually looking beyond you towards the fairy in the center of the map. But as part of this, as they pass through you, you feel your soul actually get moved slightly out of your chest in that moment as they push through you. And you cannot act again as it passes beyond you, beyond the wraiths up here to tank. You will not be able to act again until the ritual countdown ticks down by one. And that is why I feel that it is the scariest ability because I've disabled you until the tick down happens. What about Bill? Bill's fine. Bill's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you still got Bill. Thank you. He's a, yeah. he's a bit the clutch. Is it, is it our turn now? It is. That is my, that's everything okay. for me. So you guys. I got, I got some questions. Sure. Um, first off, because there's there's combo moves you can do, right? Tag team rolls. What are, yes, tag, tag team rolls. What could I do one with Bill? Yes. Does it have to be a person? Okay. No, where no, is no. Tank? Like in relation to where Ted is and where I am. Pretty freaking close. Yeah. yeah is he like, like in between us? Uh yeah. he's not. But it, not but again, like... the nature of a tag team role is that you guys have this is stuff that y'all talk about around the campfire. So if you've got a cue, you let him know what that cue is. If it's a whistle, if it's a tip of your hat, if you pull yeah. out your banjo. Well, this is like, you all have to agree to this, but what I'm thinking, right? Cause the one guy's restrained. So she gets Bell, she gets him under her arm. She takes her tongue. She's gonna lash it on the tank, like his ankle. So she can pull herself up 
right where he's flying, and then I want her to throw Bill <laughs> at one of the people around Ted so he can put his claws. I and then, you know. love it. I will say tag teams, unless you have a specific <laughs> item, only utilize okay. two people. But for the oh. flavor, for, no, no, no. For the flavor, okay. let's do okay. it. But it will use your okay. attack and Bill's attack. We won't okay. add. We won't add Tank's attack into okay. it. Okay, that's who but you're she using. Can anyway. use it to like. Well, sure. she wants the leverage. She wants to be able to throw him from as high up as possible. I so totally that can... get it. Does does do you get like spiked up into the air? Tag yes, team moves. Let's she... go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that's, squire. That's what I would like. If that's cool with sure. you know Bill's owner, that yeah, I can use. Bill, it. Bill, Bill would definitely accept this. Okay. And then like as he. Was was like coming down he would like batman wing it and he would like, and he'd, like okay. his like, spurs yeah. come out and he's just like, yeah. like amazing that's you a, guys all right okay all right. that's uh that's what i think it is so what do i have to mark i have to mark two hope three Off, hope. Right? three, three hope. okay all right so it's three hope gone that means i just have one left and okay. then you are each going to in this moment before we describe how it looks and everything in this okay. moment you are going to roll your duality dice, and then, mm -hmm. Stephen, for Bill, you're going to roll his duality dice, and y'all get to choose which one to take. How you doing, okay. Stephen? Let's see. So I just roll one, or I roll them both? both. The, your duality okay. dice are the hope and the fear, okay. and you're going to add your attack up, to please. it, whatever your attack is. I think you're using your scepter in this case. Yes. Okay, okay. great. So what's your bonus to that attack wait so how would i figure that out in my scepter like i look at what kind of weapon it is yeah take a take mm -hmm. a look at what your weapon is and there should be something on the weapon that says blank plus blank okay oh sorry actually presence we're using your melee trait. presence okay. that so it's your presence okay okay so you're gonna add my whatever your presence two, is so eight okay. nine ten so it's a 12 with hope because it's an 8 and a 1. 12 and with eight. hope. And then, yeah. Stephen, what did you have? I got, I, I got a 19 with hope. Oh, my nice. Jesus. Let's go. Okay. Oh. All a right. Nine, a 9 and an 8 on the dice plus 2. Okay. Build the clutches. All right. Now, Damn. we know, though, that this is going to use one action. I'm going to put the action token yes. down. Mm -hmm. um, but this is amazing. We're using that 19 with hope. That is going to hit, which means that you guys get to both roll your damage for the attack. Mm -hmm. So now you look at your weapon damage, Kayla. Okay. Okay. So the scepter. Okay. So it's D8 magic? Yep. What okay. Perfect. Like in the damage ice, it says D10. It uh, it, yeah, it should be right. probably like a D10 on it. Yeah. Um, I don't have the weapons right in front of okay. me, Stephen. If you happen to have the like weapon table, that would be okay. fantastic. What weapon was it? The scepter. the scepter. I think. Well, it's that's a... the far one. Would that count, or would it be the rapier, which is melee? I mean, it's far because I'm in the I mean, air, right? You can use. You're, either. Yeah, I would say you're tossing him, so okay. it'd be like the far one. Yeah. It's, so it's... for feature, it just says versatile presence melee d10, but then the damage it says d6. Well, we're Magic. rulings over rules, so we're saying it's the d. D we'll say the D10. D10. Who cares? We're about to do D10. so much damage as part of this. Let's take an action item to follow up on this after today's session, but let's do the D10. Why not? Ooh, All right. And then the, the D10 100%. is the funny looking one. Yeah, right. well, that's a percentile, but it works. Absolutely. That's yeah. totally fine. It's a, It still works. Um, Steven, remember, you have to roll for Bill as well. All right, mm -hmm. and I can roll. add a rally die to it if I want. You to. can, yeah. I mean, you Ooh, should have announced that before, it. but go ahead. Oh, shoot. you're okay. good. Just add it. Let's get at this big. Oh, damage. I haven't rolled it yet, so yeah. Oh, oh. okay. So six and six is twelve. So it's twelve. Okay, and then Stephen, what did we get from Bill? Two. Fourteen. Okay. <laughs> All right, and just to be clear, were you attacking that? Skeleton, or were you attacking the wraith? Let's uh, say the wraith. Sure. 
All right. The wraith is the wraith is what hurt him the most. Yeah. All right. Or, so or fourteen. Chicken, fourteen. <laughs> you know what's amazing about this? Fourteen is the wraith severe. It is. Ah. It is flat out at that fourteen. Okay. Okay. So, in this moment. Again, can you describe to me what this tag team role looks like as you do it? I want first, how do you get the attention of Tank? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, we're just gonna say that she whistles. We're gonna we're gonna say that. All yeah, right. she whistles. So I Tank for my acorn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you grab the grab uh, Bill yes. up, and he goes yes. and in this right thing, under. I got him close, and then I just trip up, and my tongue goes around his ankle, uh -huh. and then I fly up into the air. Okay, and then I just I just throw Bill as hard as I can, you know, towards a rate that's by Ted, and then I take my scepter and I do. Oh, it oh my God, it's amazing. As part of this, as you like fly up, can we say the trajectory? You do a couple of little cartwheels in the air before absolutely. you spike him down. Yes, fantastic. Yes, I love it. All right, dealing. I love a good artistic flourish you so, see the wraith down at the bottom kind of can, can i uh, uh adjust just one one thing sure. so like at at the top of like the swing instead of like pitching him you like have your scepter and he's like on the tip of it he's like standing oh my god and, like, fling him fly down? i love it that's down. very cute ah, like a magical <laughs> girl attack it's so good she's the one called sailor frog i love it <laughs> it's, it's, i think that's a trademarked character anyway um so <laughs> okay so amazing i'm gonna say as you do that you whistle you see the wraith who is coming up on behind tank kind of crouching down kind of looks up immediately at you and just in time to see you spinning in the air it looks up and you're uh -uh. and then down comes Ted clawing at him doing in his severe threshold so that is going to have him mark three of his health he looks quite hurt as some of the mist surrounding him dissipates though he is still standing these are some pretty sturdy guys that was very impressive well done okay all right so my question is though yeah. like after i've done this do i get to stay hanging on to tank in the air or do i have to come back down i don't really I, oh uh, can i stay i is think that fair? That the fairy flight does not include that you can carry someone okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and she'll drop down after that. Yeah, the, just for your own. Whatever. Usually, I would say rule of cool. Yes, the problem with that is though that I know for a fact that there um, there is a class that their fly feature allows you to carry someone. So I think this would be overstepping. So you're gonna have to drop down to the ground. Mm -hmm. But we could say you do that drop and like look up like a Marvel Avenger. <laughs> there you go. And like, Bill up. in front of you just. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Amazing. Well done. Right. Steven, did you have a question? No. no. Okay, got it. Um, Chris, yeah. Can I get a whirlwind in? Oh, you absolutely can. <laughs> yeah. Can, turn, right? can you tell me what, what does a whirlwind do? I need to have that context. Yeah, so whirlwind, um, when you make a successful attack using a weapon with melee or very close range, you may also spend a hope to use that roll against every other enemy in that weapon's range. Any additional enemies you succeed against with this ability take half damage rounded up. Okay, so what is the weapon's range? Is it close? Very close? Um, let's see. I don't have it on my character sheet, but... Uh, I think that I did your what? character sheet for you. Yeah, what weapon? It's a longsword. Uh, is it's is melee, I believe, in a D8. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, I can help you out here. We can get we can get two of the skeletons that are surrounding Ted. Okay, because was, you. Oh, go, ahead. Uh -huh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna ask as well as part of it of since I am in flight, could I yell to like Ted, have him raise his shield and do the whirlwind on top of the shield if that allows me to get. The guy surrounding him. Wait, Ted can't what? Move, right? You have to explain oh, that to I, me again. It's I'm in flight, right? Yeah. yeah. Could I yell to Ted, have him put his shield up, and I do the roll in on top of the shield? Oh my like god! A like a ballerina. I love on top it, of the shield. but you can't act. 
right now because of yeah. that ability, and I think that that would be some kind of action. Oh. Is his is his shield? I'm gonna say his shield is already up the because it was yeah. already up. It was already up. Yeah, I was blocking. He can't okay. not do it. That's what okay. gave me the idea. Great. So you want to attack the three skeletons over here, not this wraith, right? Yeah, they hit the wraith, right? Yeah, yeah they just hit, hit the wraith. wraith. So you're going to come over here. So you're flitting directly past. As Anura lands there in the ground, you kind of fly immediately past, and you're right there above Ted, which I love. Okay, so you have to choose one of them that you're attacking first. Which one are you attacking first? Because you have to hit well, before you can whirlwind it. Oh, got you. Uh, the one I'll attack first is the one closest to the uh, White Fire Arcanist. Okay, okay, great. So go ahead and make your attack. So remember, this is the duality dice plus whatever your bonus is based on your trait, which I believe is your agility. Yeah. So is that a plus two, I think? Uh, plus two. Okay. 14 with fear. Okay. All right. Beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of your fear tokens again, a teeth of pearly white. And, but a 14 is going to hit, which means you get to now apply this across to all of these other ones. So uh, I think you have to spend something to get that off. If it's, is it it's spending a hope? hope? Yeah. So go ahead and mark that on your sheet so that you don't have access to that anymore. And I want to look at this just very briefly for myself as well to make sure I am understanding it. I have all of y'all's sheets right in front of me. Uh, oh, no, I don't. I don't have that specific skill. So it is hope that you're marking, right? Yep. And then do you do the same amount of damage to each of them or is it half damage half damage rounded up to okay. the other guys great so what is your damage that you do with this uh the damage would be 1d8 plus 3 1d8 plus 3 okay go ahead and roll and it, your it's a rally die if you want to use it but that's you don't true. have to no, that's true yeah. you do have the rally mm -hmm. die okay all right and do i add my agility to attacks no. with this weapon no Oh, wait. I rolled the wrong dice. <laughs> it's uh, the eight one, right? That's the eight, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, like, rolling... You need to roll the six, too, if you're going to use the rally die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got the six and then okay. that one, so ended up with a nine. Nine total points of damage? Yeah. Okay. All right, great. So, at this point, as you attack the one that is closest to the Arcanist, you did you add the plus three from the longsword? Oh, you're right. Uh, because the longsword gives you additional damage. Well, okay, all right. Now good that's call, a horse of call. a different color. Okay, so tell me what this whirlwind looks like, and I'm going to tell you how this impacts the enemies around you. So go ahead. The whirlwind looks like so he uses Ted's shield, flies into there, and has like a just like a little ballerina twirl, but <laughs> okay, fantastic. Right around. Like now, a music box. That first one, yeah. because it's right there as you fly into and on top of that sword, taking your first swing, that is the first one that gets the most momentum. And that 12 is going to immediately cause that skeleton <gasps> to collapse. That one is dead. We take our ticker die our countdown die sorry down to a five at this point i can move the, again i can move you can you absolutely can um now that is going to of course though remember uh do half damage so six to each of the other two they are still standing though they look severely diminished a couple of like bones are knocked off of these skeletons but they stand there continuing and i'm going to take this guy off of the board okay amazing all right and that was so 
We've only yeah. had two people act. Okay, great. So but he did roll his fear, if that mattered. I did collect his fear, right. and that means that turn is coming over to me. Thank you so much for that. Absolutely. And I am going to go ahead and hmm, we're going to keep attacking. So I'm gonna use. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and as part of my, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to take the forest wraith that is behind Jimbo and I'm going to make another attack. So that's going to remove one of my tokens from the play. And in this one, I'm just going to do the, oh, I'm just going to do a regular attack. I'm not going to do his memory delve again to you, Jimbo. I don't need you giving all us lot of memories. horrible memories all day long. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do, oh, that one's a good one. Uh, let's take this. All right. All right. That is a 14. 14. Oh, well, plus yeah. three anymore. Anyway, so 17. Okay. All right. So in this one, Oh, and he gets advantage on it anyway. So let's see if I get a natural 20. I don't. I don't. Okay, great. So this one, he's going to lean down towards you. And he's now taking, again, with that hand that was already on your cheek, he's pressing his other hand to you. And no like the Dementors. Yeah, he is kissing no you straight kisses. up. And this is going to do... Oh, wow. Uh... 13 oh, like points off. of magic damage as he is using his life drain skill on you. How much did you say again? Sorry? 13. So 9 13. plus 4. Mm -hmm. mm. And this is magical damage. Let's see. I want to take 2, but we need to use another armor weapon and bring it down a notch. Uh, I will spend 3 hope. Okay. Oh, no, sorry. That, that, you said it's magical damage. That, that's okay. only helps for physical damage, so that doesn't work. I guess I'm just taking this damage. Okay. All right. Uh, two hits or two, two marks to me. Okay. Two marks against you. All right. Okay. And then I am going to go ahead and with my other action, I'm going to have this wraith is going. Oh, no. He is still restrained. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to have, huh. Oh, and I think uh, Anora and Bill should be up by the raid. Yes, you're absolutely right. They are over here because of that action. Fantastic, uh -huh. okay. So, I'm going to have the, as that last enemy was defeated, Remember that all this time, this arcane ward is being repaired and it is glowing brighter and brighter, supernova in the sky. I am going to have one of these creatures. What are they attacking? Just a rusted sword? I don't want to use that. I'm going to do us one better. As this is happening that pulse of energy spreads across the clearing and some of those trees begin to kind of move in this energy the wraith turns looking back at the source of this pulse and he is going to fly over to the arcanist and he is going to make an attack against her so okay yeah and in this moment, he is going to touch her cheek with the back of his hand. And you actually see both her and the stone for just a moment <gasps> drop by a foot as she's taken out of herself and into this horrible memory inside of her. And then she kind of screams out, hold them off! And she regains her composure in that moment but because she has been attacked our die is going to go back to a six and the countdown has moved up okay. i wasn't close enough for an opportunity attack right no not in that case no because okay. you're over there with the other guys yeah okay 
That's all of my items though. So now turn relinquishes back over to you guys. Who's um, oh, you're uh, uh, muted. Oh, Jimbo. <laughs> I was muted. Uh, does the proficient or the opportunity attack only ha happen if they have the feature like his class does? Yeah, it's, it's not it's, always it's, like yeah. Most people do not have an opportunity okay. attack. And option. we would consider the Arcanist an uh, an ally for this. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Are you gonna steal yeah, over I would, there? You know. Yeah, I would I would want to like kind of go there just to you know go will right on that wreath, get okay. away from this guy. That's the one that's been hurt anyways. Memory. Yes. Okay. Great. Get, get away from this one that's giving me bad memories. Yeah, that right one's there. a bad one. Uh, cool. Yeah, I'll roll over there, and I'd like to you know take a swipe at that. Okay. All right. And I will also dump. Uh, we'll, we'll give it a three hope on this one as well. Okay. Wow. Two, three. All right, uh, I'll roll damage next. All right, our duality dice. Oh, uh, 13 with fear. Okay, all right. I'm not going to collect the fear in this moment. We're going to resolve this, and then I'm going to channel the fear, okay? Cool. Uh, so for damage, that is 10, 21, plus 3. So 24 uh, damage to the rates, which I think is 16. 24 oh wait 24 to hit or 24 damage, 24 damage. what was, was the hit 13, 13 with fear oh, oh okay yeah. 13 did it i'm so sorry 13 absolutely did it my yeah, bad I didn't I, add the I, plus two, but yeah, 15. and the 24 is is absolutely in there severe so you tell me in this moment how does this uh dissipate how does this attack kill and make this diminish uh, as Jimbo definitely doesn't know how rates work, he's, you know, slashes through it, stabs a hole in the rock that he was, you know, swinging, basically swinging through this ghost into it. And I assume it just kind of gets sucked into the rock, you know, maybe getting wound up in whatever this magic is going on. Amazing. Okay, absolutely. I'm going to say, though, in this last moment, as it's vanishing, it kind of reaches out its ghostly arms at you. And instead of taking the fear that you gave me, I'm going to say that in this moment, all of those fears that it's collected throughout the years, those horrifying moments, begin flashing across your vision and your mind. And I'm going to have you take a point of stress. So that's going to be my GM. I would like to you know, Reith, kind of like holds out his hands. I'll like kind of grab onto him and then like Mufasa or uh, <laughs> Scar, Scar Mufasa to Mufasa. And, like, just like let go of his hands, let him get sucked back into the room. Long live the king. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. Great. Amazing. And he <laughs> sucks into that, but you are left shaken. How many stress do you have at this point? Uh, three out of six. Okay. All right, amazing. But that wraith is gone at this point. Now I do get to add an action tracker and we are moving down the die to a five. All right, guys, keep going. What else do we have? Oh, now that was a fear. Okay, so, ooh. All right, oh, yeah. so with that fear, God, I just, oh man, I, I don't want to keep hurting you. But you're the, it's okay. That's you're, what I'm here for. You're there, yeah. So it's just gonna happen. I'm gonna take this and I'm going to have that wraith. He's just hungry, you know? Like you are the thing that he's been these wraiths dwell in the Sablewood and they never come out because they're only brought back when they feel that strong pulse of magic. And here in this moment, he is going to go ahead and use again an attack against you so all right that is a that's a 10 plus 3 13. 13 that is. okay all right so he's so going to evasion is not doing too much your evasion is really not doing that much okay so this is going to be again his life drain skill that is a six plus four ten points of magical damage I will need one more armor slot to bring that down to minor. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. So just one. How is your health looking? Uh, 
Four to six. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. I'm gonna use my healing potion here soon. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Now I am all out of action tokens, but I am going to use a tooth, and I think that it is appropriate that I use Jimbo's tooth. Sorry. Did I say that I'm gonna use a tooth? I'm gonna use a fear, and it's gonna be Jimbo's fear, which is a rock that I'm putting back and in. And Jimbo's teeth are mine. <laughs> yeah, to give myself two tokens back because I have to do damage to other people. I can't just keep attacking just Jimbo. So I'm going to, in this moment, uh, da, 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 yep. In this moment, I am going to have... Well, I don't really... It's not going to work that way. And that guy's all restrained. We're going to have one of these attack you, Ted. So, that is going to be... Come on, dude. Alright, uh, it's a 10. It's a flat 10. Uh, flat 10 does not hit. Okay, so... He, this one, like right there on top of you, is kind of swinging down at you with this rusty thing. But you have this fairy that is still swinging around on top of your shield. And in that moment, I'm going to say that Tank, you actually just uh, kind of tap Ted on the shoulder. And he turns just in time to slide out of the way. Perfect. But the other one is going to now move around to you as well because I'm really going to try to play smart and tactically. We're going to hit the things that I've been hitting. So we're going to try Ted again. All right. That one's going to be a 16, though, to hit. 16. I'm going to mark a stress and use um, I See It Coming. Okay. Oh, this isn't a ranged attack, is it? It's a it's melee not. attack. It's Never melee. mind. Oh, All that's right. great. Okay. You try to see it coming. <laughs> I do see it coming. I just see it coming too close. I tried to use uh, my heritage to brush it off, but it didn't work because it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to deal the damage to you. Oh, it's not, it's not that bad. Uh, four on my dice plus two physical damage equals six total physical damage that is that's getting a minor pushed. all right that's a minor fantastic are you reducing it to nothing or are you just uh, no. taking it i'll just take it to the chin okay all right so they do slash across to you and you can across your arm there's this huge gash that opens you look down at it and you can see your fur being soaked with that crimson blood Okay, and that was that was both of those tokens. I'm all out. Turn plays back over to you, my players. So go ahead, tell me what you guys are doing in this moment. Um, um. I will whistle at Bill okay. and uh, point over to Jimbo, and Bill will mad dash over to Jimbo okay. and jump into the air. Balls <laughs> flail in trying to attack the wraith fucking with him. Okay. Great. I love that. Get him, Bill! Get him, Bill! Bill, Bill, Bill. Oh shit, that's a crit. <gasps> crit, 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 um, crit. They didn't change the rules for crit damage, did they? Nope, nope. Still the same. Okay, so. That's gonna be nine points of damage. Fantastic, so that, these guys are beefy. Like a single person doing an attack going into his major is pretty impressive as Bill just did a flurry of talons and feathers comes up and you see that the wraith actually is shifting out of his like line, but that is going to be two points down for that forest wraith, amazing. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And then not to dominate, but real fast, I'm going to also push Tank into the air and use three hope to swing Tank around to try to uh, take out these uh, one of these other zombies for her. <laughs> skeletons right in front of us. <laughs> I love that so much. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna need the like whirling movement again. <laughs> like, so. Gonna, yeah, it's gonna. Instead of him twirling on my shield, I'll I'll reach up and grab him, and I'm gonna 
Natural 20 Philosopher Dad. I love to see that you're still there. <laughs> it's Woo! weird in this one because it's just two of the same number. What was the number that you rolled, by the seven. way? Seven. I got two sevens. <gasps> A good one. Big money, no whammy. Okay, great. I love this. Um, and so, Tank, you're in this as well. So you roll your duality dice as well. You're making an attack with your agility, and we're going to see which one is the better option. This is to hit, right? This yeah. is to hit, yep. Not yet damage. I love all these tag team rolls, you guys. I also love that clearly this is one of the things that we're just doing all the time at this point. Yeah, so we're hard not to. Yeah, three three of us can't do it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Like, all right. So, what were your rolls? Let me know your rolls, guys. Sixteen with fear for me. Sixteen with fear. Um, I got a fourteen with hope. Okay. Well, y'all have to tell me which I, one you're I, taking. I think we take the one with hope, so we can other people can keep going after this. All right. Wise, wise move. All right. 14 <laughs> does hit. So you do Good successfully call. attack. Absolutely. Okay, great. Good job. 14 with hope. Remember, you get to mark your hope, Steven. You, the initiator. Chris, oh. you do not get one as part of this. Just That's you, right. Steven. Um, and then that uh, I will do four damage. And then whatever uh, uh, Tank does as well. Okay, four damage, and then, yeah. Seven. Seven? 11 points of damage? Wow, okay, okay. That's not quite hitting their severe, but that is, again, major damage against this wraith as you are a whirlwind, again, a flying glitter Against the wraith or the, the skeletons? Oh, you were doing it against the skeletons? I'm so sorry, guys. Yeah, we're as me and Ted, uh, uh, me and Tank are over here by these two skeletons. Okay, my bad on that. Give me. I just... think I said wraith, but I'm uh, that was on me. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I should have known better because I can literally see where you are. You know, like that's on. <laughs> like, I, we have a battle map this time. There is no excuse. You've been for uh, spreading out the battlefield. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. My absolutely. mind is all over with Bill. <laughs> All right, and you're doing the whirlwind, but you do, but it's only going to count towards one. It is only one. hit one, yeah. yeah. So, um, t take your pick. This is going to kill one of them. Which one do you want me to take off the map here? Um, uh, uh, Ted, or Tank, you, you can uh, uh, be the, the chooser. I specifically gonna... hate the one on my right. Yeah, love Fuck it. that skeleton. That guy's a this jerk. guy, I hope, is <laughs> yeah, the jerk. right of you. I've just added him from the play. I hope that's correct. <laughs> Was it the other one? I'll, I'll see when the camera catches up. Nailed okay. it. Nailed okay, it. great. Nailed Fantastic. It. All right. That one's gone. Amazing. And we're still with you guys for your turns because of that yeah. hope. Plus, we're ticking down. Uh -huh. I got something that I don't think we'll possibly switch it back to their side. I uh, just wanted to heal and possibly use the, uh, the rally die. I don't think... It I think that could all be one action. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. Absolutely. So heal on the rally die to remove stress. Okay, that's an action. And then you're... T so oh, tell oh, me what you rolled. the worst roll I could have one. gotten for both. One on both of them. Oh, uh, no. Oh, yeah, don't forget right. the die ticker. At least that's two. What? Yeah, I took that down to a four now. So we have four left. Um, okay, all right. Amazing. Cool. And anything? All right. Great. Um, yeah. Can I? Well, I'm trying to figure out um, what to do to help Jim because I have the inspirational words that I can do that can heal a hit point, or mm. I have Tava's armor that could I could spend a hope, which I have one, to give them one d6 to their armor score. But you were saying it was magic damage, and like his armor hasn't been helping him. The, the armor's still been removing the damage. It just the other my other abilities were not helping with. Uh, so that's the thing damage. is like Which I don't is, know. How many armor I, slots do you have left? In yeah. I have two of six. Two, two out of six, and how many health points do you have? Uh, I'm three of three of six. Okay. I am, I'm doing okay. I can take another like three hits. You think so? Do you want? Should I hurt somebody then, or do you want help? Uh, hurting is always the best way of healing. Okay. I love the, <laughs> That's the a best very defense answer. is a good offense. Yeah. <laughs> you kill them, okay. they can't hurt you. Okay. Um, and then how far away is the wraith that's by the arcanist and 
and Jim. He's within close range. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I can do a power push. Yeah. Classic. <gasps> yes. I love okay. that power one. Push. That was okay. a great. Oh, one. Yeah, yeah. Make a spell cast roll. So that's gonna... against the target, and okay, and then it's a D10. Smash that motherfucker. Yeah. So your okay. your uh, duality dies plus your um, for you it is the finesse. I believe. Oh, no, sorry, not finesse. Yes. Presence. The presence yes. bonus. Yeah. Presence. Okay. And do you still have your rally die? No, you used that. No, for I used early. it the last time. Right. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay. That's it. Against the wraith, huh? It's a seven with fear. A seven with fear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, all right. Sorry. Now, I'm go. Oh my gosh! This is the first time you've rolled with fear. Mm -hmm. So I finally get to introduce your fear <laughs> token to the game. So first, I do need to add one more action token. So before I forget, so I'm going to add one more action token over here. And then your fear is a small crown. <laughs> the weight of your royal responsibilities mm. flood into your mind and what your family will do without you if you are lost here. Will they even care the spare that you are? <laughs> Yeah, right. All right. This queen. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so no window loves it. <laughs> now you now that was a far one. Now the other thing that I'm going to do as part of this is I'm going to make a fear move. I'm not actually going to keep your fear. In this moment, I'm going to have and I did misspeak in the last episode. It's not actually I got D and D confused. It's a speaking sphere, not a speaking stone, but we're gonna still call it that rose quartz in your pocket. And that rose quartz at this point, because remember the travel that you've taken did take somehow magically a few hours. And you can hear in your pocket as you begin to do this push, you hear a and in that moment, you look down, giving the magic that you had in your fingertips just enough distraction to shoot wide of the target. And you reach down and touch the stone, triggering the voice, though it slips from your grasp into the dirt. And there in front of you, as it lays, you can hear the voice of Marlo Fairwind. And she's saying, Anor, Anor. Anor, please. They're, they it's, just, it's a ward. It's a it's a ward. You need you have to get it to them, please. They're they're coming. We can see them on the horizon. Please, you have to. And, ah! and then you hear a, a blood curdling scream in the background, and the call goes dark. I'd like you to take a point of stress. I didn't like that. You're welcome. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. That, that was, was negative. This is real bad, you guys. All right. All that was not intense back there. Yeah. <laughs> it's very scary. But remember, guys, there is, even in this darkness, that board is being restored. A bright, glowing light there in the sky. Things are looking not great, but not awful either. You guys can do this. Okay, but we unfortunately, unfortunately, because you rolled fear, it is going mm -hmm. to turn back over to me. And I have to really give this everything that I've got because you guys are getting close. So I'm going to first use my last fear that I have access to, which is one of Tank's teeth. I'm going to utilize that to have two new of the soldiers pop up right there in front of actually i'm going to have them pop up right near tank but coming out of the ground there at tedios oh my gosh i'm struggling so hard with this you guys that is a real time doing all of this okay so doing great. thanks thanks guys it's tough all right 
these soldiers <gasps> climb out of the ground, kind of fueled in this moment. And Anora, you standing there, remember, you've just missed an attack. You mm. hear your friend crying out to you. You look across the battlefield and feel see more z- zombies. I don't know. Crawling mm. out of the ground. You are in a dire, tragic place. You, the mm. beacon of hope in your party as the bard, feel that rally in your chest to begin to fizzle as these skeletons are all going to make an attack against Ted. So I'm going to be using the group attack here. So I'm going to roll. Oh yeah, that's going to be a 15. There's They don't get an addition, but I believe that that does succeed. Yeah. The attack. Okay. All right, great. Hi, Turtle Boy. Welcome to chat. I love the love, way love Turtle <laughs> like... Boy. <laughs> all right, so then in this moment, Tuesday, they are all Tuesday. rushing you, clawing, gripping at you. And because of the mechanic, they're doing four points of damage each for a grand total of 12 hit points to you. How are you dealing with that damage? 12 hit points? 12. T- well, sorry, not 12 hit points, but 12 damage. So is that your minor, major, or severe? That would put me in my major. Okay. I'm gonna use... You're sure 12 and not 11, right? No, it's 12. I'm so <laughs> sorry. It's four times three, and I'm pretty Ooh. bad at math, but I think that's the total. <laughs> I'll use two of my armor slots to reduce it to a minor. Okay, all right. How much armor do you have left? I have two armor slots left, okay. and I'm at three out of six HP. All right, okay. Explain what your armor is starting to look like as these creatures are ripping into it. So I'd say at this point, the my buckle shield, my round shield is on the ground, like I've dropped it. Um, and uh, I've got like some slices into like the common clothing I wear underneath my straps that I have. Yeah. And then the other straps are starting to be pretty frayed. Uh, as far as like near the like openings and stuff. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and you know move on from that corner of the map. We're going to. I'm gonna use. This is a new mechanic, so I haven't actually used this before. But um, I'm going to use one of my action tokens to end a condition on one of my creatures, ending the condition on this guy right here. So that's going to use one of my tools. So he finally pulls free of these vines that have been restraining him for the entirety. And he is going to look at Anora, but then he looks past at what is happening at the edge of the map. And he, ignoring you, marches past over to Jimbo. And this is going to use another one of my... Which skeleton is it? This one One up here in the front near... Anora, nothing close uh, to you. I know. I love that. I wish that you claws get... on him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's going to make an attack against Jimbo. So, hey, buddy. Here we go. Uh, that uh, is that's a twelve. Vulnerable. I'm, I'm vulnerable still. Oh, okay. yeah. Both lots of stuff. Fourteen. Both would hit. All right. Oh, okay. All right. So that's going to be. I'm really eleven evasion doing. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be as he comes up on you, you surrounded by things and in this intense fear place, he's going to strike out at you dealing seven points of damage. So where does that fall in your ranges? Seven, not six. <laughs> seven. I'm so sorry. It's seven. Uh, I'll use one armor slot to bring that down to minor. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. How is Jimbo looking in this moment? So much Upset. has been happening. Upset. Okay. Yeah, he's had just such a very frustrated look on his face. Such a hard day. And I have. You remember my childhood. His is 
bullshit. Yeah, I have one last token to use. So I'm uh, going to... Like, I am up to here with this, and I'm as a dwarf, you know, very short. So. Yeah, it's like he's up to five feet with this. <laughs> five, six. I'm up to five, six with this. And the horrible, horrible news, and this for my new players, who probably, by the way, I think that y'all might have felt picked on in that first combat because of just the way combat goes. But this is how it plays out, is that I have one token left, and I have one guy who hasn't moved, and he's been fighting and targeting Jimbo. He's going in there. We have so much support happening for you in chat, by the way. We have Jeed screen. I didn't hear no bell, and that's just because there's dirt in my ears. But bring it. <laughs> I love that so much. I hear no bell. Like, like... All right, so he's. I'm using my last token, and he is going to, I'm going to flavor the memory delve. I'm not going to use the memory delve again, but I am going to use its attack. I don't want to use that die anymore. I want to use the fear die because I feel like it's appropriate in this moment. Ooh. All right, that is going to be a five total. Are you coming out of here with all these like 19 and 20s and all of a sudden you got a five? Yeah, yeah. That was a two on the fear die. Not very fearful. Okay. All right. So in this moment, you look around and you have just been attacked by the skeleton. I want you to describe with Gene Screen's kind of commentary on chat in chat. What in this moment do you feel that spurs you on that causes this guy to miss? I honestly Hang think it's them. They, they've slowly just been like hitting me. All my armors are kind of falling off from underneath the poncho, hitting the ground as we're going. And now I'm just able to move a little more nimbly and just, you know, see the swipe come in. And I'm trying to like, no caress in my cheek, I duck down. <laughs> ready to come off with the uppercut with the pickaxe. My precious <laughs> dirt. All right, cheers. Okay, great. I love that. Cheers. All right. So with that. Play is going to turn back over to you, my players. As a recap, we have four left on the die. You have one, two, three, four, five enemies in play right now. And we could be seeing the tides turning. Let's let's do it. What are you guys doing? Before the tides turning, I'm still vulnerable. Oh my god. See, this is where guys I say I'm not right, mechanic girly. <laughs> I'm not mechanics girly. Nobody has ever taken po poison damage from me. Any subsequent rounds? Okay. <laughs> oh, that was that was my, my wraith. Mm -hmm. Twelve. Twelve a hit. Oh, oh, you. So again, my flavoring as the GM is always going to be you. The way that our lives work, we're all traveling down these paths, these strings, these infinite strings that unfurl in front of us. And you, Jimbo, in your chest, you feel a moment of hope envisioning that future where you duck out of the way and then reality slams back into you as, God dang it, as he is using the D20 for the damage, D20 plus two. Mm -hmm. Oh God, that is... Uh, I rolled an 18 plus two is a dirty 20 amount of damage. Um, so, so is there a difference from like hitting your six out of six versus going over the six out of six? No. Do you, do you mean for what? For your hit points? Yeah. Uh, I can either bring it down to where it just hit six out of six or it could be, you know, seven out of six. <laughs> um, so out of six I, I I don't think that there's a difference I think either way it, it will okay, it I won't will... waste the armor then I'll just you know go down you're gonna go down I'm going down I'm pulling up the rules on that okay so, okay all right works. okay guys all right so you're dropping to zero health okay so we are going to make a death move in this case okay um, so your options for that, and I, again, I should have had this up in front of me. Yeah, I'm pulling it up right now. Yeah, your options are going to be, uh, 
I'm, I promise you this is going to be okay, guys. I promise you, okay? But, but I do want to act this out. Steven, you are muted, but I see you screaming. <laughs> like, you, you have, you can't, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, you cannot take Blaze of Glory in this specific situation, okay? Like, in all other situations, you could, but this quick start adventure, nobody knows the scaling, okay? So, Blaze of Glory as a death move allows you to really spur your team. You know, I don't feel right about that. If you want to take Blaze of Glory, you could. You could do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. I'm gonna risk it all. Okay, okay, risk it all. What? Tell me what risk it all does. Uh, so you roll your duality, di duality dice. If it's hope, uh, or if hope is higher, you stand your feet and clear an amount of hit points or stress equal to the value of the hope die. Uh, divide the hope die value between these. Uh, <laughs> uh, if your fear is higher, uh, you cross through the veil of death. Uh, if your duality dice are tied, you stand your feet and clear all hit points and stress. Okay. Okay. That's fucking all, all right. You here we this. go. So here we go. Oh. Here we go. That's more than fifty percent chance. More than fifty fifty. That, that, that's yeah. Out any day. Yeah. Right any, any day. Any this day. This is where your day turns around. This is it. Is it? I guess. Uh, I might be dead. What is it? It's like beer? Uh, no, 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 you're uh, not. Okay, no, you're not, though. Because, and, and again, this isn't cheating. This isn't cheating. This right. is in the quick start adventure. Okay. And, all right. Now, if you want to retire Jimbo after this, this is fine. But I do, I will read it directly. No one knows, uh, no one thinks that I'm cheating. During this quick start adventure, because again, we're in open beta. This is scaling, okay? Mm -hmm. If a PC ever marks their last hit point, they make a death move. For the purpose for not for I'm not from I'm for the purpose of the quick start adventure, they simply fall unconscious until they are healed for any amount or the danger passes. So I love that we had this moment here together, but I'm going to flavor the fuck out of this, okay? So here we go. In that moment, this wraith comes up to you. You see that timeline split. You see that future where you succeeded, but instead that wraith comes in and he presses his hand to your cheek and you actually see a change. Earlier today, you saw the end of your life flashing with those insects, but it switches and glitches and all of a sudden you see that realigned to right here in this moment. And in that last push, you feel your spirit fading and lifting from you. But you, as you're sinking down to the ground, your eyes tilting up to the sky, you see lurching out from, and no one else can see this. No, everyone can see this. You see from the edge of the forest comes into view the glimpse so what none of you could see before when Jimbo went into that dream sphere that gurking moving creature with an eye in the middle of its face and no mouth comes over and leans down to you and you see it flex its fingers and a moat of light is going to come out of its palm and you all hear ringing inside of your heads this is not what I have seen for you in my glimpsing. And you are going to, and I am going to keep you at one hit point, but you are going to take one more point of stress, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. And as that happens, the glimpse is going to vanish from sight, okay? You're not gonna take any more actions within this combat, all right? You are recovering there, but all of you shaken have now seen this moment. I fall Scary! Down, I'm looking up. I fall down looking towards the, uh, the, for I mean, the uh, white darkness. I'm like, hey, you didn't see this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, uh, well, as part of that, though, I am going to also say um, that the, I, I was going, I had planned to flavor it as this, so I'm going to add it in. If somebody went down, given the guidance that we had, I am going to, as that happens, as the, 
uh, glimpse has entered the view. The arcanist suddenly lifts just slightly before all of her robes kind of swirling around her and she looks down to you and flexes her palm and a sphere, a dome of abjuration is going to form around you and she smiles as if to say, you can't cheat me out of that moment. And those fireflies from the woods are going to come and encircle you. So, yes, it is plot armor. You sick fucks in chat. No, I'm kidding. Y'all are all, nobody's saying anything. <laughs> like, nobody's saying like, anything. Media. I was like, I Never was like, what? It. Yeah, I was like, Ooh. all right. <laughs> okay. For those that were curious on the rolls, it was a uh, 10 on fear, 6 on hope. Oh, was that? It was a good roll. That's a good roll. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Oh my god, you guys. All right, we've hey mechanic tested. <laughs> we it. Yeah, we're doing everything. All right. Yeah. Well, that Number was one, my last lot, action. It would have been a lot smarter, you know, going with uh, uh, avoid death, where you just you know possibly get a scar. But I was like, eh, yeah. risk it. It's <laughs> super risk it for the biscuit. Honestly, Can also the story that we've made here. Go ahead. Oh yeah, I love that he ended up being the one with the uh, the firefly thing in this to happen. It's pretty dope. I'm telling um, you guys, sometimes tabletop RPG and dice want to tell a beautiful story. Okay. The story makes itself. It's <gasps> Go ahead. Bill then viciously attacks uh, the ray. Okay. Uh, because mm -hmm. he just watched. That's exactly what I was gonna do. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good call. <laughs> Bill, Bill, Bill can't. His little chicken brain can't stand what he just saw. And he's gonna feathers flying, fly at the at the wraith, claws out. Okay. All right. Amazing. Make that attack for me. Uh, this is a twelve. Uh, it's twelve I'll with hope. Twelve with hope. Oh, actually, fourteen with hope. Uh, nice. Okay, and this is at the wraith. It's yeah. difficulty is 13, so that did it. The 14 with hope mm. did it. You need to mark a hope on your sheet and then tell me what damage it is. Um, it, is uh, it is a measly two damage. Okay, all right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a mark on this. These wraiths are beefy, okay? They are pretty strong, but um, but he is he, you're winnowing him down. I'm adding an action to the tra tracker. Go ahead. I would like to remind everyone, you can use your experiences to add to hits. I don't know if we've been doing that very much. Oh, you yeah. You have to spend I keep hope. Forgetting about but it. You I spent all my hope that. in the town. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I had yeah. the roll in one. That was it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. We have one token on. That wraith is winnowing down. We have two people back here with, with skeletons. What are we doing, guys? I have a quick question. So um, on Tank's left side there, that um, skeleton, that's yeah. one of the ones left over from the whirlwind, right? Yeah, absolutely. So he's yeah. already injured. Can yes. I attack him yes, to try to get that tracker down? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you adding an experience? No, you don't have any hope. I'm I sorry. Need hope. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> for reminding me. Yeah, too. no problem. <laughs> Uh, 12 with fear. 12 hits. 12 hits. I take a fear. Um, okay. So I have the fear. But you go ahead and roll your damage. 12 is their difficulty. And I'm collecting it for use later. I'm not going to use it right now. I rolled a 1. A 1? Oh, actually, uh, 1. 4. 4. Yeah, okay, yes. So the thing about these skeletons, guys, is they are not beefy at all. The wraiths are are beefy. These guys are easy. They only had one hit point left, and with that, you tell me how you kill this guy. I swing in a swirl, because that's what I do. <laughs> I hit his head off, and then I grab his spine like Predator from those Alien and Predator movies. Oh my god, okay, well... Wow, uh, I was I was gonna say that you know if it was a guy with skin on that would certainly be like a how do you want to do this moment but he's a skeleton you can grab that just yeah fine. it's already out okay yeah. great so that guy is now dead and we tick this down to three I do however have one token I am going to use I'm gonna use the wraith and I need to bring him over to Enora so. 
I'm going to now make what, it. Is he terrified of Bill or something? That he just can't handle. <laughs> and he, he just he doesn't want to be against the city. It's Why? just, it's just yeah. Oh, you know Here's what? Three. It is a it's it's the the reason in my head though is that it's fueled by the concept of fear and Nora is terrified in this moment with all the bad stuff oh, that yeah. just happened to her. Bill's just an angry bird. No, he's scared an angry bird. Trademark. Um, <laughs> all right. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to make the attack. All right. It's a 10 to hit. Who, the mobile evasion score is I a don't I want to be clear, everyone. Mm -hmm. GMs remember, don't it's always a remember. Baby. It. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so it flies over, and Anora, I need you as it reaches out and touches your cheek. Give me a moment of terror from your childhood. I'm going to say it was when she was younger okay. and she was lost at the market because her family just wasn't paying attention to her as they do. And someone tried to steal her and it was not her parents that stopped her. It was a nearby merchant. It wasn't even a guard. Nobody was paying attention to her and like nobody noticed. Oh my God. <laughs> and there you are alone in the center of this clearing. No one around you as you remember this moment. Oh my god. Ew, gross. An I deal 21 points of magic damage to you, which of course is in your severe I know. What are you doing to mitigate that hit? Or are you just taking the full three? We're just going to take the full three right now. Okay, okay, all right. Ooh, okay. It really landed. It really landed. She's yeah, hurt, she's you know, so... for the story. I love, Kayla, that you're so committed to the narrative. You're <laughs> like, nah, nah. She ain't even, she doesn't even have the energy to pull her off. Not right now. Oh. She just, she missed the shot and her friend, like, died. Yeah. He did it, oh, but he died. that's so sad. And she's got her other friend on the phone screaming. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm so sorry for the kind was of not GM kind of I am. <laughs> like, like, but aren't you invested, immersed, and like hate me a little? No. All right. Um, that's it. I only had that. It is returned to you guys. Stop rolling fear. I told Chris, by the way, that this was going to happen because y'all rolled so well in the last game. It was all hope, except for There's she both so many teeth in that I got a crit. Do you um, want her to try and do that push attack again against okay. the Wraith to see if she can redeem herself? Let's do it. Are you adding an experience? Are you adding an experience? Listen, so I'm because I've got Swamp Princess. This is not going to work here. Or which way are you looking? Now, I don't know if this affects the Wraith, but she's got her eyes like this. And she's like, stop. Just like tear snot all down her face. Back and forth. So okay. I'm thinking maybe he's in corporal though. Like, is he gonna, is that gonna affect him at all? I don't see it affecting this guy, so. unfortunately. No. But I'm he's gonna do what I always, I'm gonna do what I do in these cases though, and I'm going to leave it up to fate. And by the way, those who love mechanics, there are fate rolls in this system. So okay. stop, don't at me. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna say it has a pretty low chance, right? Yeah. So let's roll a d20. This is your first time rolling a d20 at table, the, I think. Yes, because each yes each notch is going to be 5% chance that it happens. So it's a pretty reasonable thing. If you get higher than a 10, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it works. You have a 50% chance. It's pretty good. It's a six. Okay. Well, <laughs> so it doesn't work. Wasn't good enough. Fate says Wasn't good they. enough. <laughs> like, okay. All right. She's crying. God's fault. And it doesn't. It Time to fun. make your attack then. This is with your duality dice. We're rolling your hope and your fear and you're passing his evasion. Come on, girl. Okay, tw what's 12 plus seven? Big, many, <laughs> 19. <Seven. laughs> okay, okay, but it's with fear, but. That's fine, that's fine. Fear. I really <laughs> imagine that something might happen here. So go, this is, yeah. so I, I want, oh yes. Go ahead. That is going to hit. I am going to take your second tiny crown. Mm -hmm. But you're not hearing Marlo again, okay? You're not hearing Marlo. Thank God. Yeah, but I have So this is a, a D10 magic. And that's the funny looking one, right? Yes. 
Yeah. But, okay. Yeah, D10. So roll the. It's it's the one that looks like a uh, like a more fun diamond. You can use the percentile die. It's seven. Seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Great. So this is the thing about this guy. Okay, is okay. that you guys have been only hitting these things with physical attacks. Mm -hmm. They have resistance to physical damage. Okay. But Enora is now blasting him with magical damage, which means for the first time the entire combat, he is taking the full brunt of damage. And that is the exact number that you needed to hit to go into his major threshold. And it had two left. So Kayla, in this moment, you summoning all the courage that you have, tell me how Anora acts. Give me flavor for this moment as you mm -hmm. are resolving. Yeah, she's crying. She's screaming. She's not throwing up, but she's thinking about it. And she's putting all of her energy into it to the point like the little force glows a little bit like the same pink as her skin. And it just like blasts him. And he's not like, you know, he doesn't have a body or anything, but the mist just shoots out and just just Result. dissipates uh, mm -hmm. across the land. Okay, amazing. Mm -hmm. So with that, the rape. <laughs> and yeah. we are moving <laughs> the die down to two. We are almost done, you guys. You see that this, in the sky, this is burning very, very bright. But because that was with fear, I do get to take actions. And I'm going to rip it. So in this moment, I am going to use a fear token. I'm going to use tanks to go ahead and add some more damage. And I'm going, I'm going after Tedios in this point. So that's three actions that I have. No, we're going to use those two against tank. That other guy's fine fighting the chicken. He's good. Grab, <laughs> so grab his. Oh my god. Yo, Miss Twist. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gene Screen in chat is referencing an obscure <laughs> video that I love. The yeah. old Miss Twist. <laughs> Great meme, sir. Great meme. <laughs> so good. 10 out of 10. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and take those two and make an attack against you, Teddyo. So here we go. Eight. Flat eight. Plus zero, not hitting. Okay, so rallied by this moment, you look up and you see Anora blasting this out of the way and you feel that in your chest and these things come at you, but you just push them back. The other one is going to attack Bill. Uh, that is going to be one. That's a three plus zero. So neither of those is going to hit. Now I... <clears throat> I do We're have- We're both safe! Yeah. Uh, and that uses, that uses all three of their attacks this round. I have an action track, an action token on the board, but remember for my GMs that are watching this, your guidance is to only use creatures once per round. So at this point, it's turning back over to my players. You guys get to go. Um, oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I, I rolled a crit uh, when Anora did her attack against the raid. So nice. I was just going to attack one of these here skellies. Tedios would have swung around and like bouncing off the rock there, just like slammed into the zombie or to, into the uh, ancient skeleton warrior like right behind him there. Okay. Um, I got a crit. <gasps> Um, and then so total, I did 13 damage. 13 damage. Oh, yeah. wow. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So that's going to take one of these guys out. Are you doing the one behind you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Amazing. That guy. Oh God. He's fine. He's down. That's okay. I don't need to grab him. He's gone. And then I'm going to move our ticker down to one in this moment, guys. That stone begins to slowly rotate as though it's beginning to power up and you see the arcanist's arms flail out from her side as that glow is emanating once again, even brighter, and it is still 
your turn. So guys, where are we going with this? I smack a skeleton. Yeah, smack so that next, skeleton. Next to me and Ted. Let's get rid of him. Okay. Get him. Are you at, oh no, you don't have hope. I'm so sorry I keep asking you. Go ahead, I roll with hope this time. <laughs> like. <laughs> Imagine while he's taking the swing, you just see in the background the rocks rotating and just like slowly nudging uh, Jimbo just out of the way. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 12 with hope. 12 with hope. Mark a hope for Woo. yourself. That's powerful. I and did it immediately. <laughs> now, okay, and a 12, I just have to check one more time, is exactly their difficulty. So go ahead and t give me your damage roll. I think this is a D10 plus. Anything? What is your, it's on your- I roll a d10. Oh yeah, uh, 1d8 plus three. Okay, d8 plus three. Okay, go ahead and big money, come on. Seven. Okay, all right, so that, sorry for my face. Uh, that is their major threshold. Um, and these guys, this this guy was full health. He was not one of the ones hit earlier. He sprouted up like from the ground like a daisy in the words of Mulan's little dragon. Anyway, I'm moving on from that. Uh, <laughs> Yes, Mushu, yes. So with that, you are going to defeat this creature. You go ahead and tell me how this, the last enemy that your group is taking out, by the way, Tank, getting all of the how do you want to do this moments. So. I um, do an over overhead slash with my sword okay. right in the clavicle and then... Um, shatters some of his bones there and i grab his pelvic bone i rip it out and i break oh. it over my knee like in a wrestling move uh, yes oh my god amazing the old miss twist the old miss twist yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay amazing so in that moment at that point our tracker is going down to zero our countdown die i'm so sorry is going down to zero which means that we are officially moving into the next piece which we're not there's no more fighting i'm so sorry just to be clear guys you've done it so in this Yay! moment Yay! as you deliver a powerful blow the ritual ends this arcanist you see okay i i'm gonna read this but i i love flavoring it for myself but i'm just gonna respect the quick start adventure the crate uh stone and the arcanist all come f crashing to the ground as the keystone vibrates with arcane energy all at once, a soundless explosion erupts from the white fire arcanist, dissipating any last enemies who might remain, which is only one at this point. The clearing <laughs> is quiet once again. All right, guys, and we formally get to now exit combat. So in this moment, let me go ahead and congratulations, guys. You did it, though it was very scary. It was. I came out completely unscathed. <laughs> I, I was right. thinking that. I was like, the tank's out here. Just fine. Oh my gosh. So scary, you guys. Oh my goodness. Made it the first, all the other sessions without taking any damage or any like resources mm -hmm. other than hope. And then they just killed you. I mean, you didn't die, but they killed you, Rachel. They as Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> and this is this is the craziest part is when people want to accuse me of doing things that the game requires. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You enjoyed it. I always do. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's a, I, it. I like it. to win. Like, <laughs> like, okay. So you know, and again, I think that the flavor of that isn't quite right. So I will describe once again that as she is there floating in the air, that arcane stone, you see that pulse of energy sweep across the area. You are all blown back. You have to kind of put up your arms to stay on your feet in this moment. The fireflies dissipate from this arcane ward around Jimbo and it fizzles out of view very much like our map was trying to do. Um, and then you see the last remaining skeleton is just swept away in this blast of arcane energy and at that point poof, the arcanist crashes down 
The actual ward itself, though, lowers gently to the ground, now with a beautiful glow emanating off of it. And there it stands, or floats rather, in midair, still spinning silently, a Nora as you have always seen it do when you've entered the gates to the capital city where Marlowe resides. There in this moment, though, the stars come into view again as the light has dimmed here in this clearing and you all stand there. The Arcanist, a dim, dim light on the ground, looks up to all of you and smiles gently. What are you guys doing? Jim's on the ground or did he stand up too? I assume at the moment I'm still down. Because that is stressful. I think yeah, I, I think they should go friend. see to their friend. I think I she get... leaves her phone and she's like crying and fussing at him at the same time. Like, what? why are you wearing this hat if you're just going to die? You can't die like this. And she's upset with him. Uh, I'll... It's not even his fault. It's hers. But she's mad at him. I'll head over as well and, and pull out my health potion and be like, open his mouth up. Let's shove this down. Oh, don't. Oh my God. That's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love that. So roll, Steven, you can roll the D4 for it. <laughs> A four. Oh. Okay. okay. That means she could use like when she was fussing at him. Could she call that an inspirational word? Absolutely. Like, you absolutely can. That. You could do anything you want, guys. It, it heals one hit point. This is not a ton, but... Nice. I'm back he's, to full. He's full health. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Bring it back in, coach. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Uh, Jimbo kind of sit up like, oh. hey, guys, we, we do it? Oh we did it. God. Cool. <clears throat> Um, I don't remember why we did it, but I think we're getting paid. Oh my yeah, yeah. <laughs> we better be. Yeah, yeah. you that was are. Stressful. You are certainly going to get paid, you guys. Okay, so in this moment, um, because we are, wow, this is a longer <laughs> episode, um, but we are going to be wrapping up this. So you all there in the clearing kind of just, you know, that moment of intense stress with Jimbo sitting up in this, in this muck in the mire, you all have a gentle moment of repose and patience. And eventually you begin to gather your things, the arcane ward, you're able to close back into the box, the crate by pushing it down. And you all exit the clearing. As you go to exit through that same gate that you had come through initially, you do look back over your shoulder and you see the arcanist standing in the middle of the clearing, looking up at the sky. And you feel her immense age on her. And the depth of loneliness that she must feel here, being the person who has restored these wards time and time again over the centuries of her life. And you understand a little bit better the quirks of who she is and why death for her is less meaningful, less of a concern even if you hate that it impacts your family and friends you feel for her as she turns towards your gate and you see her hobble back she comes into her home with you and remove or sorry uh, outside of her forest home and she removes the acorn from the ground that tree archway collapses on itself as a small tree and then the sproutling withers back into the ground and she smiles up at you a bit fatigued. She smi in her smile, she lowers her treehouse back down 
and invites you all to come inside, restoring the ward on the crate and it resting outside. <clears throat> she sits cross-legged in an overstuffed chair and there is an exhaustion in her voice as she speaks. You fought hard. I'm not surprised, of course. The King Emrys and Marlowe must keep good company. I'm very glad you were there. And in that moment, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to close out any last things you want to do this evening as this final moment here inside of the treehouse in Respite. With that idea here, we're kind of more or less taking our rest here before we head back to wherever. Okay. I uh, place the drawing of a lover, which is myself, on her side table and thank her for everything to give her something kind of to remember us by. She smiles and kind of takes it and holds it close to her chest for a moment. And then you see like one small tear kind of etch off of her face and she places it on instead her mantle. are just sweet things i'm not trying to like do like a short rest or anything right i could just do like a anything frivolous action want. yeah okay. this is just okay. like okay. we've had this momentous excellent. moment yeah excellent i just want her like she's not really she kind of leaves them to do their thing and she walks over and i know that um she can magically do it herself but anora makes her tea and just brings it to her oh. while she's resting <laughs> so kind she's gonna she sips on the tea and mm -hmm. she kind of looks at you and says you have such generous spirit you remind me of my granddaughter and she looks lost for a moment and you again can feel that timeless age on her so and how she is just the last of anyone that she knew she knows us now yeah. yeah, this is our grandma now. Uh -huh. Our weird death grandma. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Our weird death grandma. The you know. Okay. I want to remind her too of the Isle of the Old Gods, where the fairies that I know go to retire someday when they get tired, oh. in case she ever finds Take an escape route out of this. Yeah. 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 So, as we often do in these stories. We're gonna close out here in this gentle repose. You all become her guests for the evening, taking on the guest privileges that you've had here in the town of Hush. The fire crackles and you all sit around it, listening to Tank tell her stories of the Isle of the Old Gods over what feels like hours, the exhaustion sitting deep in your bones. The embers begin to slowly go out and go ahead, Justin. Yeah, I did want to, uh, for for Jimbo, uh, one last thing before we wrap up completely, but he will go find where he put his uh, little mug that she'd passed him earlier he didn't take a drink of because he was too suspicious. Yeah. And so he takes that, goes, sits down on, assume she has some other chairs there. She kind of curls up on one of those, gets out that so super soggy cookie, snacks on that, and then kind of while everybody else is like, you know, focus on their whole thing, he'll sip on that and pull out his little uh, letters from his family and start kind of going through there. You'll see some like kind of tears kind of coming from him. I'll keep it to himself, but he'll go through it eventually. It's kind of like, uh, is there a room we could use? And he'll just kind of go wherever way she kind of points, he'll kind of wander off that way and go to sleep. Yeah. But okay. He's had a long day as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he has. Yeah, you. he really has. Um, I am going to, so there are... There's one more moment that I, I want you to know that as the rest of you go to sleep, the Arcanist, she just seems to not sleep. And you, Jimbo, as the you are one of the last ones falling asleep that evening, you see her there in the den, her shadow kind of creeping across the room. You see her walk over to her window, kind of cradling something to her chest. And then leaning over, you look, 
And you see as she begins opening vials and these small fireflies go out through the window out into the air and she releases all of these fireflies back into the world. And you feel that something about today has shifted the way that she feels about death. I don't like how much I love her. I love her. You're welcome. But I'm so sorry. I am very nice. I'm very kind, very sweet GM. I also am that bitch. You are. And I have a Nora. No. One last item to close us out. That was enough. I'm going to spend your last fear. This is my last fear that I have. And this is yours. In the quiet hours of the morning, very, very early, three, four, you're not very sure. You have two speaking spheres. What does your other speaking sphere look like? It's a tiger stone. Okay. And this how... is the personal one, the other one was the business one. Yep. <laughs> two other questions. How does it alert you to an incoming call? This one, it sounds like, you know how you run your finger over a crystal glass? Oh, beautiful. To make it ring. Okay. That's what this one does. Okay. Pretty and cool. who is on the other end of this stone when you answer it? Her sister. Okay. So, Enora, in this morning, the sleep still in your eyes... You hear that ringing sound and a muscle reflex. You reach into that side table and pull it out and you hear the sound of your sister's voice. And she says, Anora, Anora, I, I need you to come home, Anna. I, I need you home now. There, there are strange things happening. I don't know what to do, please. Please come home, Anna, please. And that's where we're going to close out for the evening. Oh my okay. goodness. What a, what a good ending. You're too good at this. Finger. I don't like this. You're too good. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Scary. You gave her a little sister nickname. It's very cute. Anna, Anna, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, well, guys. We're gonna, so we've done it. That is the Sablewood Messengers. Thanks so much, TKK Liar. TK Liar, I love yeah, you. That was a very, very kind compliment. Yeah. That is the Sablewood Messengers, obviously, with a ton of flavor, and my cat is losing it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it. Um, now we have an adventure hook we're gonna keep playing this system further next week we're gonna take a break from the campaign because i do want us to have a kind of post-mortem to talk about the system we'll also do some little world building stuff and figure out what y'all do on your long rest by the way um but that's it i think it was a beautiful introductory introduction to the system and thank you guys so much for being here and being a part of it um and then also make sure to go over to our other sources of uh uh where we live on twitter on uh, youtube and those places follow us um give us likes hang out with us talk to us there too we're also on discord <laughs> friendly. yeah we're everywhere okay well, thank you guys so much, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.